I know exactly what you were saying. You were saying, this shit more than a game. That's how you were saying that. I was like, I get it now. He's just saying, this shit more than a game, Derek. And Derek's like, yeah, I agree. This shit is more than a game. We should be busting the Panthers' butt. That's Boy. all you were saying, right? This yeah, shit more than a game. That's all it was. That's all it was. Exactly. This shit more than a game. Good morning, good evening, and good night, whatever time of the day you are watching. I hope it is a good one. Today, y'all, we have a very special video. And let me tell you something. I know... Falcons fans say, I always say it's a special video, but this time I mean it because, y'all, we have a very special edition of the John O'Bond Show. We have a very, very, very special guest. And when I told y'all, I say, if I ever get into this podcast, streaming game or whatever, I'm going to give you guys a top of the line guess. I meant it because today, folks, we have Saints player, Saints center, Saints pro bowler. One more time. Saints team captain, Eric McCarty down here at the Dish Shit More Than The Game Studios. Hey, man, from the bottom of my heart, from the whole crew, thank you so much for joining us, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Yeah, so give them a round of applause. <laughs> and make sure y'all at home when y'all watch this, give them a round of applause, man, because let me tell you, I ain't going to get my exact location, but we in the East, bro. Y'all know that we in the hood. Nah, baby, we got Eric McCarty in the trenches with us, man. That's some historical, monumental stuff. And again, man, we, that's some real Dish Shit More Than The Game energy, I got to say. More than the game. So let me tell, let's start off, Eric, with how's your offseason going? Shoot, it's going good. Um, you know, I'm kind of, I'm pretty low key in the offseason. Mm -hmm. uh, hang out with my wife a lot, try to get a lot of that time back that I missed during the season. Yeah. Um, you know, do a little bit of travel back to Houston, see my wife, family. Went out to Wyoming for a little bit. Wyoming? Yeah, it was, it was, it was different. That, is that all you've traveled to so far is Wyoming and Houston? You ain't go to no exotic location or anything? No. No, we'll normally go to like a beach location. Yeah. Uh, but we've never been to the mountains. Never seen this. Like I've seen snow, but like to actually like <laughs> be in the snow, like it's completely different. So um, I guess we ain't gonna never worry about you going to like Buffalo and then for <laughs> so not, all that cold weather I'll, stuff. No, ain't. The, the cold games? No, I'm not for that. Yeah, that's, we, that's, we, that's a different. You you're still the southern boy. I feel that. Um, I got a question, man. So when in the off season, like when the season is over, how long do you kind of just take a break from the game and say? I'm, no workouts, no football, nothing. I just want to step back from the game. And then when do you start, like, really getting into football workout more? Because I know you just can't go to mini camp in May or whatever and say. No. Nah. You'll, you'll, you'll get beat up on if you do that. So I'll normally take off until at least a week after the Super Bowl. Okay. So that, I think it ends up being, like, five, six weeks, something yeah. like that. Yeah, um, And I'm just chilling, sitting on the couch, drinking beer. The light. Enjoying Mardi Gras is early. The light. You know, I try to. I try oh, to we keep saw it. something about you in Mardi Gras. We're going to bring it up later, but go ahead. <laughs> um, so like, I just I try to be low key during that time. Uh -huh. And then I would say, kicking up after that, I'll start working out on my own. You know, just light little stretching, yoga, hopping on a treadmill, the elliptical, the bike, lifting weights a little bit. Uh -huh. But then actually, tomorrow morning, about 6 a.m., I'm going to wake up and I'm going to drive to Dallas. And that's when I'll start doing my. Training, training. Dang. Like my old line okay. training. Dang, so you driving up early in the morning, go to Texas to get it in. Yeah, because it's about a, about a seven and a half hour drive. Because y'all got to be dedicated to play this sport, man. It's like a... Yeah. I give y'all a lot of props. That's the most barbaric sport, football. And to see y'all, especially when I see y'all in picture, like when you walked in, I'm like, this dude is a damn giant. Like, you don't really appreciate that when you're watching it, even in 4K <laughs> on this TV. But y'all really got to put in work to... Just be ready for September, like just to be ready. Yeah. And then now it's 17 games, which I don't know if you're a fan of 17 games or not. To me, I feel like that's crazy. Like they, like I'm not trying to, this is a John O'Bone's opinion. I don't know how a league can talk about player safety and say we're going to do 17 games. And I hear they might do 18. And hey, that's all that needs to, that's all that needs to be said. Um, all right, we got to talk about last season. Um, one of the positive notes was that for the first time ever, you were named a team captain. How awesome was that for you? Uh, I thought it was really cool, man. Um, you know, just kind of the trust that my teammates put in me, that they looked up to me in that way, and they were like, damn, this guy, this this 26-year-old guy who just got – I feel like I just got in the league yesterday. Kah, it feels like that. that it like, really does. Like, just got in the league yesterday can come in here and can be a part of helping us build something. Uh -huh. So it was an honor, and like, I really appreciated all my teammates. And shoot, whoever, whoever had a, a part in the vote or a part in the picking, like, I appreciate that because it was an honor. Yeah, you did a damn good job. To <laughs> the crazy season that we had last year, we were able to still <sighs> tread Thanks. water as much as we did. We appreciated your leadership during that time. Uh, what are your goals for next season now? Oof. Oh, do you have like goals? 
for your career. Like, you know, you were named Pro Bowler for the first time, which let's go. Uh, congratulations on that. That was awesome. You get a bonus for that when you make the Pro Bowl? Uh, you get a bonus in the game. You don't get a bonus from the team. I think you get a Wait, bonus I ain't gonna lie, bro. I haven't watched the Pro Bowl in years, so I know it's flat football now. Did you even play in it? Like, do the centers have a role in the flat football? It was great for me. Because at that it. point, it was the week before the Super Bowl. Yeah. So I was extremely out of shape. <laughs> okay. Like, like you, say, that, you if, said five weeks you chilling, so I get ch- it. Chilling. Like, if they had said we had to play a game, bro, I'd have been in trouble. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was out there. Well, so I snapped for the game. That was the only yeah. thing I did. Like, I snapped in the game, then I had the little snapping competition. That was really hard, by the way. If y'all watched it, I guess, I'll, I'll I got, YouTube it. I'm gonna go I check it out. Points. Um, <laughs> but like I was in my stance out there, legs shaking. <laughs> Not the Bambi legs, bro. <laughs> and I, I got in my stance maybe thirty times, and I'm dang. like, gosh, dang, bro, this. And then that really influenced me when I got back. I actually started working out that week instead of waiting until after the Super Bowl. Yeah, so. Cause you were with some of the best players in the league. Does that like motivate no you? Fair. Like, okay, y'all talking, y'all like say, man, this is what I'm doing to you know get my game to the next level or whatnot. Or is it just like everybody's just chilling like it? Really, it's, it's man, a it was really... in Vegas too, huh? No, no, it was in Orlando. Oh, it was Orlando. Oh, so yeah. I got to go to Disney World. Yeah, uh, they ain't hookups with, with hey, the Disney World. They give, they give us Universal Studios though. I like Universal Studios. I like man. Universal Studios. Did you cool. do any of the rides? Uh, I went. I didn't really do too much. Oh, come on. I'm, gotta, not a, I'm not a huge rides person. I'm a huge theme park enthusiast. Right, okay. so next time you got to go on a ride. I'll say my wife's not a huge theme park. She's, she is an anti-theme park enthusiast. Wow. But we had to go. Like, we had to go get the experience. Yeah. You know, walk around, had a little butter beer uh, for the first time. I heard it tastes like uh, root beer-ish. Or am I all no, no, no. That's, that's right. But I think it's a little bit, little bit sweeter. I don't, know. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's my first time having one. Yeah, no, I, I got to try a few more. It. But my partner, my partner told me I had to try it because he's like a big, he's a big Harry theme Potter? park enthusiast, oh, he's and a big yeah. Harry Potter person. So I tried it, and that joint's that joint's fire. So that's cool that you were at the Pro Bowl. So is that like now you say, okay, I experienced that. I want this to be the norm. I want to be in the Pro Bowl every year. I want to be an All Pro now. I want. I mean, actually, you know, you want to make the playoffs again. You want to make the Super Bowl. I was gonna say, but... I don't want it to be the norm. I want to be in the Super Bowl. Mm. Just, we just plain do. and simple. Just plain and simple. We all do. Well, um, not this guy, by the way, because this guy is a Rams fan. Here we go. <laughs> and y'all know y'all robbed us in 2000. And luckily, you wasn't involved in that robbery. But, but still, you, you, you still feel the effects of it. Like, I still feel that. Yeah, because you were in Texas, yet. so you know, like, yeah. you feel the ever green spirit of this shit more than the game all the way out there, too. But I don't want to get into that. I just, when you say Super Bowl, I look at him. He got, like, this little smirk on his face as a Rams. It didn't, oh, even, it didn't even cash in on it. They went and wet the bed over in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they, they scored three points, man. Yeah. But, but, but that's all right. We redeemed ourselves against the Bengals. So anyway, <laughs> um, you ever think about your Hall of Fame shot? Like, you were like, I really think if I keep this consistent level of play, I might have a shot. So I mean, I know so. for sentence it's real hard. It's like, hard. It's hard. Um... Obviously, that's something that I desire. Like, right. that's something that I want. But I feel like I still have a lot of accolades that I would need to reach before then. So, like, when you say goals, like, I was an alternate this year for the Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. I want to, if, if, if we're not in the Super Bowl, I want to make the first team. Like, I want to, I don't want to have to be like a. a you ain't got to compete against Jason Kelsey anymore for that. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. And he, he, he deserved it every year he got mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And I want to be an all pro. Yeah. Like, mm. truthfully, I want to be an all-pro player. I think you deserve it, too. Um, Not that I'm, like, some offensive lineman guru, <laughs> but like, you can tell great offensive line play when you see it. And you were, um, you know, our offensive line obviously started a little bit slow last season. But then once y'all started picking up steam, you could just see the level of play that you had rise up. And that was a – I say rise up. I'm sorry. That's a Falcons term. Forgive me for that, guys. Boo. You saw your level of play rise. and. I definitely think some all pros are. And I ain't just saying that to, like, blow smoke up your ass. Like, I think uh, you're one of our foundational pieces – for the Saints, which brings me to this upcoming season. Right. Obviously, there's a lot of jilted fans because we have not made the playoffs in three years now. I'll be transparent. I'm kind of one of those jilted fans. I'm like, man, I just don't see where this team is really going in the future. What would you say to the most jilted of fans to give them some optimism that the New Orleans Saints can come back to the playoffs in 2024? Because me, when you started your career with the Saints, all you knew was the playoffs. Your first Absolutely. two years was playoffs, Absolutely. divisional round. Right. The first year we lost to Kirk Cousins, but then we made the division. Uh, like, you think that's the norm. Like, yeah, every year I'm supposed yeah, to be in the playoffs. So I'm sure absolutely. like these last three years to you, it's been like, man, why am I on the couch in January? I should be out there playing. Absolutely. So what would you say to the most jilted of fans of how the Saints can get back to the playoffs in 2024? Well, first things first, can you give me the definition of jilted? Because I do not know that word. <laughs> that's that Texas uh, A&M. I, I, that's that I, Texas I, A&M that's education. Fair. That's fair. Uh, I, I assume I, jilted that means is like, like disgruntled. Spurn. Yeah, this drunk tour, like, yeah. just low optimism. Like, you spurned us the past three mm. years, so now we feel like there's no point of having any optimism or faith in the team because 
the past three years, we've been burned by having all this hype and we haven't mm -hmm. been playing in the postseason in January. So what would you tell the fans, like, to give them, like, some renewed optimism that, hey, y'all, I know that things have been rough a little bit, but we'll be okay. We got some building blocks to get back to that level of play that y'all used to as Saints fans? Yeah. Well, first off, I absolutely agree with y'all over the last three years. Like, we haven't played up to our expectation up to the level of play that we needed to. And that's frustrating for me as well. Like, yeah, you see it. You see it in your play and you see it in your attitude. You know, when you <laughs> – we'll get to that, but go ahead. But, like, just know that y'all aren't alone in that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like, nobody else wants it more than we want it. And, like, I know that sounds, like, very cliche or mm -hmm. whatever. But, like, that's the truth. Like, I – like – we go in there every day. I've gone in there every day for the past five years and busted my ass. And I know that every other person that I'm playing with has done that same thing because we all have a common goal in mind. Like, mm -hmm. we all want to go in the Super Bowl. But optimism-wise, number one, I'm really excited about the new offensive hires that we have. Ooh, yeah. We're going to get to that. See? Uh, 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 that's music to go ahead. Bro, say uh, it. No, no, no. Let no, let no go ahead. Say what you got to say. I'm going to finish. All right. Okay. Okay. He's speaking my language. <laughs> I, listen, I, I, I haven't looked at the playbook yet. I'll be the first one to tell you. Uh -huh. But I just know the scheme that they're coming from. And that scheme is one of the most O-line friendly and efficient mm. systems. Yeah, music to your ears. That I think is in the NFL. And I feel like that's something that could really benefit us as a team and an offensive line. Yeah. Um, and then look, I've said it for years now. We have the pieces. Facts. Like Olave, dog. She, dog. Camaro. AK, dog. Juwan, dog. And that's just on offense. That's just, that's just on offense. I'm, I'm just naming offensive players. Right. Like, defense, we, we know they dogs. Yeah. But, like, all the pieces are there. And so, I, I'm i always an optimist. I'm always the guy that's going to look at things on the bright side. I'm always going to be the guy that goes into the season with expectations to make the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl. Because mm -hmm. if not, ain't no reason to be playing this game. Exactly. Like, I don't, I don't play Thanks. this game to be jackass average. <laughs> I like that. Thanks. Like, I, I, I don't. I don't I'm just being truthful. Like, I don't, I don't play this game to be average, bro. So, and I think that everybody that I play with has that same mentality. I like so, that. we've had that same frustration as well. Um so, yeah, just know that each and every day that every person goes in there, like, we are pursuing greatness. Yeah. And, look, me and Ziggy, like, <laughs> Linda, too. Like, we've seen some Saints teams that are bad and have given up. Like, you know, like, you know, last month of December, like, they they done. You know, we've seen some bad Saints mm -hmm. teams, right, Ziggy? Like, no <laughs> so, for y'all to keep fighting, I appreciate that part, right? Like, I was disgruntled, like, man, we doing all this. And, of course, we still had a shot until the last week. But I really appreciated that y'all. Like, y'all obviously care. Like, y'all not giving up. And you've seen, like, with the Raiders last year, like, you saw when they were just done with, uh, God, who was the Raiders head coach? McDaniels. Yes. And, you know, then when they got done with that, when Pierce came, you just see the level of play. Y'all mm -hmm. kept that level of play throughout the whole season. And I do appreciate that mm -hmm. as a fan. Uh, you talked about the new officer coordinator, the new officer staff, and the new playbook. Have you had a chance to talk to Clint Kubiak yet? In passing. We haven't had any in-depth talks. We haven't, um, like, talked to playbook yet. Yeah, but I'm imagining but you're going to be, like, the Star Wars for what's because you're the center, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to learn all of that and I'm gonna get on that once I get back from Dallas. So, like, once mm -hmm. once OTA starts, when I'll take a or OTA phase one is when I'll start diving deep into that. Um, but if it's anything like what I expect it to be and it, like I fully expect it to be, I'm really excited. That's more pro bowl, small all pros. <laughs> That system creates, like, great players and, you know, elevates the stature. So I'm excited. You saying that the, you're excited for the offensive staff makes me a little more excited that, okay, maybe this is, I mean, because this is my words, not his. I don't think NFC South is still all that special where y'all can't, you know, win a division. Mm -hmm. So you good? I just wanted to just uh, just say uh, if if you can, in post-production, just rewind back to our previous episode. Oh, my God. Everything our oh team captain uh, has said. Oh, my God. I just want to say that's the same thing that I was saying. I said we won with a – we had a – we ended the season with a winning record last year. He, I don't he know was, why y'all were so upset. He was, know, a, was in the hunt. An like, annoying the season. optimist. I, I appreciate that, though, because I'm an annoying <laughs> optimist. Like, hey, y'all should be I'm best friends. <laughs> they should be. If, if y'all go back and watch some of these episodes of the John O'Bourne show last season, I was taking a lot of flack. Even in some of the games we lost, I stood up for a lot of the players. I was like, look, guys, like, it's sometimes we got to look at how we lost, and sometimes you can find little pieces and nuggets to carry into the next game. Nah, Zig, we don't hear all that. <laughs> Derek called. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hold on, guys. Like, you know, but – to hear uh, Eric McCoy come in and say what he just said, I'm just saying, like, you hear somebody that's in the trenches, 
saying what your boy Ziggy's been saying. So, so he's gonna be like, he's gonna be insufferable next week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let me hear. Was talking about uh, the new offensive system. Mm -hmm. um, I know you got to learn a new system and stuff like that. Um, do you have your own tendencies like during the season? Um, you know, I know you have team meetings. Y'all break things down as a team, but as an individual, do you break down film differently from your other teammates? Like, how do you go about your game plan throughout the week? If you don't mind, yeah, explain yeah, that. No. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see if there's any like schedule changes this year just because you know with the new OC coming in y'all know like what that'll look like per se but as an individual I do have a certain way that I like to do things okay. um so we finish playing on Sunday if it's a noon game I try to watch the film before I go to bed make the corrections look at my mistakes um where I could have had a better first step where um I could have had a better mic ID on third down mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. and then Monday that's normally when we'll go in as a team and watch it again. Okay. So I've already wa like watched the film twice. If it's a night game, mm. then it really depends. I don't sleep good after the game. If it's if it's a because night game, because of pain or just because of no, like I just, the I just is still there. Like I just don't sleep good. Wow. Okay. Like mm -hmm. there's there's lots of night games where I mean we had like two this year, three this year, but where I'll be up to like four in the morning. Damn. Sleep till oh. just up. Like I like I want to sleep. I'm in bed, but it's just it's just hard. Right. Um. But to answer your question, then Monday, it's kind of a transition. We watch that film. We get grades back from the coaches. And then later that afternoon, I'll start taking, like, a peek at what the other team is running, what, or, like, what their base down defense is or base personnel defense is. And then Tuesdays, I actually try to take completely off. Okay. Like, I try to just take a deep breath, separate. Let me rephrase. Tuesday during the morning, afternoon, evening, then at night. I'll go back in. I'll look at some game film, like just a full game, two full games. Wednesday, that's when we get into our base plan. Then I look forward to Thursday that night. So every every night I try to be ahead of what we're going over tomorrow. Gotcha. So then Thursdays I'll or Wednesday nights I'll look at the third down plan. Thursday nights I'll look at the short yardage, uh, goal line red zone plan. Friday nights I'll get back to watching some games. Saturday nights I'll watch some games. You gotta be dedicated to this, yeah, man. Yeah. People think like, oh, y'all just play on Sunday, man. You gotta seven days a week, and you take off Tuesday a little bit. But like, you yeah. gotta put in hours to do this, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. Like, that's some. Um, that's why when people always like, oh, football players, they overpaid. I'm like, no, they're not. One, y'all playing a brutal <laughs> game. Two, y'all the greatest alleys in the world. Three, like, it's not just catching the football. Like, y'all gotta put in some time and dedication. And that sounds like you better get to hang out with your wife from September to January because you are just focused on game film, practice, working out. It's, I mean, it's, it's a full-time job. Like, and I know this is a rewind. Because the hardest month of the year is August. Ah, uh, especially in that heat. You Which y'all in get, LA this year. So I don't know, you, I'm assuming you are excited about that. The fans are a little iffy about it, but. Yeah, but that, I appreciate it, bro. Um, you see, we got the production, <laughs> service, everything. <laughs> the, the hardest month of the year is August, bro. Uh -huh. You get yeah. out there in that New Orleans heat, bro. It ain't kind. And you from Texas. It's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Kind. It's the most unkind thing in the world. Like, so it was news to you, the whole team's just, I'm assuming. I, I know you can't speak for the whole team, but when they announced that y'all were going to LA for the uh, or California, wherever y'all going, Irvine, I think, or something, for a training camp, I'm sure you're like, well, that's. The weather would be nicer. Yeah. I mean, but it's you know, it, it, it's far, like, you'll still be away from your family. So it has its pros and cons. Yeah, I feel that. Um, but the weather being nicer going to be. That's, 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 <laughs> hey, nah, that, that New Orleans heat, bro. At that time of the year, it's almost unbearable. It it'll make it makes a man out you. I ain't gonna lie <laughs> to you. And then this guy's from Texas, and he's saying that about Louisiana heat. So, because Texas ain't no joke with the heat it's either. Not, it's not. It's Louisiana's not. Louisiana's a whole nother animal. Um, before we shut the buck on 2023, uh, obviously uh, the main concern early in the season was the offensive line wasn't mm -hmm. gelling the way that obviously you, someone of your standard, would want it to gel. And then as the season went along, y'all already got it together. Was it just putting in the reps to finally, like, turn that corner and get y'all to playing a good level of play? Or, like, what happened? Was there a light switch that finally went off at some point where y'all say, we got it down now, you know? I really wish that I had a good answer for this. But I would, I'll tell you, like, the first five-ish weeks of the season, after we played the Patriots, or when we played the Patriots, I feel like we turned it around. But those first couple weeks of the season, bro, we were terrible. I like transparency. No, like, we, we, we were not good. 
and I'll, I'll be the first person to tell you, like, if we're not, if I'm not playing good, right? We weren't good, and I, I feel like that was a in a large part because I wasn't playing super well the first few games. Uh-huh. Um, I thought I played, I thought I played good. I mean, you made the Pro Bowl, so man, like, well, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you know, Jeez. but not, 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 not to my not to my standard. But I feel like I played good against Carolina, but I didn't play good versus Tennessee. I didn't play good. I remember playing in week three, but anyways, I didn't play to the standard that I was supposed to. So that, I feel like that had an effect across the board. But then once I started playing better, we all kind of <coughs> gelled. And then you pair that with the fact that we, the lo- the later the season went along, we incorporated more play action pass, mm, which is critical because I think that's that would cause strong points the play action pass, which is what it was. This is me. I'm like Pete Carmichael. Why are we not playing to this man's strength? You know, Ziggy's the uh, annoying optimist. I'm not a pe- <laughs> am I a pessimist, Ziggy? I'm not because I'm missing this shit more than the game. I can't be a pessimist, but at times it could come. I'm off raw. As... Anyway, I'm raw, but I do it because I care. Like when I do, you know, I got my YouTube channel, whatever. And then sometimes I look back on stuff. And I'm like, ooh, that was kind of mean that I was talking about the team. But it's never personal. Like it's, we say because we care. Like it's never yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. we're not like oh we hate you guys. I mean, we just want y'all to play so good because y'all are an embodiment. I feel like the Saints, uh, and I'm not just saying it because I'm a Saints fan, but. Y'all are the embodiment of a city no more than any other team of all sports. Mm-hmm. And so when we get mad and when we ran and, you know, yet at the coaches and all the stuff, and Lord knows I ran a lot, uh, it's not because we, you know, no personal <laughs> vendetta. We, we care. We care. So when you said a play action, I'm like, yeah, because I remember yelling from week one to five or six or whatever. I was like, why are we not doing play action? So I'm glad you said. I feel a little bit reaffirmed by that. <laughs> yeah. No, and I feel like that's something that really benefited us as an offensive line as the season went along. Because, well, I mean, when you're just dropping, when you're just play, playing drop back football, like, that's hard. Right. Like, I'm just keeping it a buck. Like, that's hard for an offensive line. But when you get under center, you can, and you're, you're play, even if you're in the gun play action, like, the defensive line at least has to play that for the first second and a second and a half. Mm. And I feel like, like that slows down the pass rush. Mm. And it helps. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that was honestly like a huge contributing factor. Even even more than my play, like that was a huge contributing factor to that. I think Clint Kubiak is going to uh, incorporate that a lot. Uh, you talk about how frustrated you are. Obviously, one of the major points of the 2023 season was when you and Derek Carr kind of had your own failed uh, <laughs> on a full kind of argument, a fight, uh, out of the way. <laughs> So I remember because we go live, me, Ziggy, Sean, uh, every Tuesday, and we say, we titled the whole episode after that. We're like, is this a big deal or is this not a big deal? I was a ball boy for the Pelicans for 13 years. So I've seen uh, every NBA player you can think of, and I've seen how intense and passionate up close in the locker room, on the court, Mm -hmm. it gets. So I know that sometimes teammates fight, teammates argue, but it's not anything personal. It's just like y'all want to win. So... My opinion when it happened, I said, I think it's a bit of a big deal because it seems like some of the cracks of the foundation are showing. Like, I think the team is a lot more frustrated than maybe what they're saying publicly. But I'm like, mm-hmm. also, guys, this happens a lot. Like, it's not like the first time team yeah. is fighting. It's nothing personal. It's not like you hate Derek Carr or anything. It's just y'all emotional. And so what would you tell the fans? Well, you know, because some fans are still like, oh, that means that he doesn't like Derek Carr and the team doesn't no, like no, Derek no, Carr. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. That could be the furthest thing from the truth. Good. I will be the first person to tell you, and don't, don't, don't let me sound political. If I start sounding political, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, yo, chill out, bro. I love Derek Carr. Cool. Yeah, it's good to From you. the bottom of my heart, I love Derek Carr. And that, that, that's critical because a lot of fans think that Carr isn't popular. But that's because, one, when we got that Drew Brees cloud over us, we think that every quarterback <laughs> we get should be a unicorn. And two, Carr is just so different from Drew and Jameis. So, like, so we're not used to, like, I guess his style, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it's for you to say that you love him and that the team loves him, that's actually very important. Yes. No. To tell the fans. I love Derek Carr. That's number one. Number two, it is like a an extremely passionate and and an extremely I'm trying to think of the word. I'm not gonna think of it, but like when you in it, you in it. Yeah. And like you lose emotion sometimes. And then that's that's number two, and then number three, completely un- the, the the truth of the matter is the majority of that was completely unrelated to Derek Carr. That was I had mental health struggles going on. Oh wow! At that point in time. Wow. Okay. So, while a lot of people think that that was the the big thing, like I had a whole bunch of stuff going on underneath here. Like yeah. that was just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I had a whole bunch of things going on down here wow. 
that I was struggling and with. And we never see that as fans, right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. But absolutely. once again, I think we've talked about it before on the show. Like, sometimes you never know, like, what these players are going yeah, through. To your credit, when you people be saying things on a lot of these shows, you know, they don't think about, like, maybe that person's going through something. And that case in point, you know what I'm saying? Damn, yeah. So it, that's why I always try to think of, like, how I say things and <clears throat> try to be optimistic because, you know, you never know what's going on. But yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. It's just so uh, after the game, certain. I mean, because we won the game, like we scored two yeah, touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. I was like, shit. Yeah, we, start, we started hoop. We, we started hoop. I was like, Eric needs to argue with Derek <laughs> Carr after the game. Just arguing before the game. Shoot, we were going defeated. Uh, but it's like a kid video up because you know, Eric. I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a pretty good lip reader, and I went back and I watched the tape a few times, and I kind of saw when I really rewatched it what really happened. You could play it, Ziggy. I mean, you wasn't really just arguing at him. I know exactly what you were saying. You were saying, this shit more than the game. That's how you were saying. I was like, I get it now. He just saying, this shit more than the game, Derek. And Derek was like, yeah, I agree. This shit is more than the game. We should be busting the Panthers' butt. That's Boy. all you were saying, right? This yeah, shit more than the game. That's what? all it was. That's all it was. Exactly. So I was like, okay, I get it, Eric. You were just yeah. saying this shit more than the game. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. It. And all I'm, right. I'm not going to lie to you. I've watched that video a couple of times because I, I got family. Of course, I got family that send us to be like, damn, oh, you all right? Oh, been going crazy. Oh, yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> um, but just watching at that time, I realized that looked really aggressive. I mean, and someone I of wanna... your stature coming out, yeah, yeah. be... my heart was saying, I'm like, oh boy, I'm about to, I'm about to get my ass so I, I just want to say I'm very sorry to everybody out there, because that is, that's not who I am. And not to be too serious, but it's just not who I am. Yeah, but, but so I'm sorry. I think it does embody some of this shit more than the game energy. <laughs> it, it is. It's more than the game. So myself. Uh, Eric, I, I always wanted to ask you this, and that's why I'm so glad that you came, kicked it with us. Uh, when you got drafted, I want to say you are the first person, you can put up the video, to wear a fictional character's jersey <laughs> during your drafting. Uh, was there any special meaning behind that? Oh, uh, was it just you just that casual? You can pause right quick, Ziggy. Are you just that casual? You were like, it's day two. I'm just wearing what I feel comfortable with. Is there like, are you a Fresh Prince fan? So you really wanted to show Will Smith some love? Was there some <laughs> sentimental reason behind it or anything? There's not. There's not a sentimental reason behind it at all. <laughs> I, was just, I, mean, I was just chilling. I was vibing. Like, that's all my people around me. That's some of my best friends, my family. Um, hell, that's at my grandparents' house. That's awesome to have your um, grandparents be able to witness that moment yeah. for you. Yeah. So, um, so you didn't have like a suit on for day one, and then when you didn't get drafted on day one, you were like, well, screw it, huh? I'm nah, just going to wear. I don't even remember what I had on on day one, to be honest, but. Like, yeah, I was just vibing. I that's your chilling. mom and dad? That's my, yeah, that's my mom It right had to there. be like a great that's, moment. That's huh? my pops right there. That's my grandpa sitting in the chair. That's awesome. And what many know, keep my it playing. Uncle, that's my uncle with the beer in his head. Hey, that's how you celebrate. <laughs> that's how you celebrate getting drafted. What many know, know is that the day and that's a special moment right there, man. That's sure how it all came together. Pause that, Ziggy. Pause that. Is that your dad? Yeah, that's my pops. Now, how did he make a shirt that fast? Bro, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Did I don't know. Right? Like, did you know. Did y'all know that you were getting drafted by us? No clue. No clue. We traded up for you, too. Yes. Was a damn no, good no trade up. That was fast. That was hell, that was the next day. Yes, because play the video, Ziggy. That's when I. Yeah, that's when Man, I you proposed. That was a damn good two days for you. You got drafted. Right. You proposed to your wife. Yeah, that's my old lady. Shout out to Bianca, man. That must have been like uh, just a, a whirlwind of emotions for you those two days. Yeah, bro, it was wild. I ain't, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like that was. That's awesome. That was wild. Um, like seeing a. A dream come true. Y'all met at A&M? Mm-hmm. Awesome. We met in September 3rd, 2016. Oh, you can know the date and everything. It was it was right after some... Boy, my wife be asking oh, me what date, and I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> it, it, was, it was right after some events happened in my life. I love that, you, like, wifey. I kinda, like, it was just right there collectively, so like, that's why I remember it. Right. Um, but yeah, that was a wild day. Wild wild weekend. So you're not, oh, you're not even a Fresh Prince fan, then, are you? No, I'm a fan. All right, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it was just I'm a fan. All right. But it's not like... Oh, hey, me and Sean, though, two of the... Yeah, we, we swept by that show. So when I saw you wearing that, I was like, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, Eric, no, not the, yeah, so the, the draft process, Eric, how was that? Because I know some people, you know, these, these draft prospects, you know, the draft coming up, you know, some people be like, man, I'm definitely going in that first round. Mm-hmm. Or they have that mentality of, I am way better than this guy. Not to be cocky, but yeah. mm-hmm. I'm better than this player. Yeah. But you constantly seeing your name not being mentioned mm. over other players. What mm. motivation that did that give you more fuel to the fire that whoever drafts you, all right, I'm about to show you anytime I meet up with y'all on that field, 
This is why y'all should have took. And were you the first time taking? I don't remember. Oh, was that no, I was technically the third. Dang. Technically, but I ended up being the second okay. because okay. Garrett Bradbury went first round to Minnesota. Okay. I think he was picked 20, 21, 22, somewhere in there. Then Elton Jenkins, who plays with Green Bay, Green Bay. All right. he was a center. Well, he kind of played everything in college, but his last year he played center. But they took him at 44, I think, and then I went at 48. Okay. Um, but the draft process, you want know, me to I can just start from the beginning and say that it's <laughs> stressful <laughs> as you know, hell. The combine, yeah, so and they, the of, they picking prize you do as a pub, bro. I'm like, make, right. damn. <laughs> But does it make you nervous? Like, why, you why did you steal that pencil, Eric, in kindergarten? <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> no, nah, they really know everything about you, bro. Like, That's crazy. Like, everything about you. And, like, they going back and they're talking to your, your high school teachers, high school coaches, like, the academic advisors that you worked with at A&M. Like, that is crazy. They, they, they're doing their due diligence because, I mean, wow. if you're taking somebody in the draft, like, they obviously – you plan on them being a – integral part of your team mm-hmm. um, <laughs> um yeah um let me think let me think I, how to re- answer the rest of the question it's stressful as hell mm-hmm. number one yeah because they're looking up everything about you number two because you got to go out to that to the, to the combine and the combine like i ain't gonna lie to you it was not fun mm, like yeah. that is that is a that is a grinder of a few days. But you put on a lot of good game film in college at A&M. And one of the classic games, of course, was you guys versus LSU. Whew. Seven overtimes. Y'all won 74 to 72. Uh, before we play that, how crazy of a game was that? How exhausted was you after the game? Dog. Seven overtimes. Dog. We were all watching. We were all watching. Not even knowing who Eric McCoy was. We were like, good Lord have mercy. This game is never going to end. And I, the fanatic in me, I feel bad. I'm sorry I'm saying this. I was like, I hope these guys go like to 10 overtimes, 12 overtimes. Like that. <laughs> just cycle. Let them play. Yeah, let them play until the sun comes up. Cycle. <laughs> 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 this shit more than a game. <laughs> no, bro, like that was a tiring game. Because, I mean, it's, it's December in Texas, but it was still probably like 85. Like you're still getting used to oh, the yeah. weather. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you, I like, guess still not cool out there. Um. I feel like the only good part about it was them boys was just as tired as we were. Yeah. So if you start look at like the last few plays of the game, like we just out there leaning on each other, giving everything we got, and but that leaning was, on each other. That was the LSU team with not the year. I mean, the year after this one, LSU took it to the next level. Man. With Burrow, with like that, some Hall of Fame potential players on that LSU team. Was that like the highlight of your career at A and M? That was a great game. It was. No, that's a classic. I would say it's top two for sure. Top three. It's probably number one. And then we played Tennessee earlier, or we played Tennessee in 2016. Uh-huh. And it was a... I mean, it's Tennessee. That shouldn't be that important. No, no. It was, it, was, it, was, it was when Josh Dobbs and AK was there. So Ooh, like, but AK was not really playing like talking about it. Nah, AK was out there that game. Oh, really? Well, going, going stupid. shout out to AK, man. Going stupid. And that was a three overtime game. And we were both ranked. We were ranked like number seven. They was ranked like number eight. Yeah, because y'all were doing the damn thing. We was doing it that, that year. So that was another one. And then honestly, the game after this one, the bowl game, I feel like that one just had some sentimental value because I knew it was my last game. Uh, yep. And like we want to think play NC State. <laughs> like yeah, we, we 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 beat up on them pretty good. So that's probably my third. But this one right here, like it was very important as well because we had never beaten LSU before this, uh-huh. or at least since we joined the SEC. Yeah. And then for it to be. A seven overtime game against that LSU team too, like that makes it more historic. When you see Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, uh, Jamal Chase killing it in the league, you're like, "Whoa, that team was the dogs. one we beat." Yeah, dogs. Um, but I have a bit of a hot take. You might even hate me for this. Oh. It shouldn't even be in your top moments. It should have never happened because they start the uh, video over and we'll splice this in during the show. Eric, I'm sorry, y'all did not get that snap off. Play it, Ziggy. Play it. Three, two. One, zero, no. The clock is at zero. Y'all, can it mom? It's because your video choppy. No, nah, that's just, that's unfortunate. <laughs> unfortunately, you know, we're, like, we're not in a top of the line studio, so we got, you know, we're working with what we got with the TV. Look. Eric, look, look, is that the game's like stuff from the beginning? Ball, Three, Mississippi. Ball, 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 Two, Mississippi. Ball, ball, Mississippi. Ball, Mississippi. Zero, no, 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 no. It should have never happened. And yes, Andrew, I'm calling y'all out on it. He said it should have never even went to seven over times. Well, it did, didn't it? Huh? <laughs> And we won, didn't we? 
I see when people uh, watch the watch the post production, they're gonna see how it it, it, it shouldn't have counted, man. Hey, it shouldn't have counted. But I mean, it did. Johnson, but, it, but it did. Yeah. That's that's the issue here. Is it did? You know, deep down, are you like you know? I, I, I probably hiked the ball that one second. So no, probably... I'm not like that deep down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, we finna beat LSU for the first time. And I'm like, damn. So there's also a video of me circulating, or not a video, a picture of me circulating. It's after the game. Uh-huh. Like, I was so, just dog-ass tired. I just laid down. On the field? On the field. I bet. Do the seven like, times. God fa- damn. Fans rushing the fields, people all around. I'm over there. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't step on you. Sheesh. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a good time. Well, for you, I'm happy, but I'm, uh, it's, a, it's an yeah, LSU house. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. I like, kind of feel like. LSU, should... like, number three in my heart. All right. Well, why you didn't go there? I ain't got no offer, bro. Oh, wow. Oh, and she was tripping it. Come on now. It's all right. I, I'd rather you be a saint than be uh, a <laughs> LSU Tiger. Um, what's the biggest difference, Eric, from living in Texas to New Orleans? Were you excited to come to New Orleans? One, I feel like you had to be because you were like, whoa, I get to play center for Drew Brees, one of the Absolute greatest quarterbacks of all time. And no, this, no, in this household, he whoa, whoa, whoa. is the greatest quarterback of all time. There we go. There we go. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thank I was going to correct you. Thank you. All right. No, no, no. Trust me. Trust me. I'm just <laughs> trying to be politically correct for nah, the outside no, New Orleans. But no. we know Drew Brees is the GOAT. Were you excited though? Like, damn, I get to play with Drew Brees, and I'm not going too far from my family. Where like they can come to games, I'm not too far from home. It's the South. I'm in a still. I mean, I know in August you hate it, but I'm still in hot weather. I'm in a dome. Were Absolutely you... no. Like I was uh, ecstatic. That's the word I'll use. Uh-huh. Like you said, playing with Drew Brees. Like I don't think I could have asked for a better first two years in the NFL. I bet. Like regardless what happens the rest of my career, like I can look back and be like, damn, I played with Drew Brees. Bet. I was Drew Brees center for two years. On his last game. On his last game. Like that's like that's crazy to me. I think that's that was one thing I was super excited for. Like you said, number two, it's close to the crib. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a five and a half hour drive. Dang, that's not bad. My mom, my mama left earlier today. My mama, and my sister. Oh, she, she, was a, she, she was in the city. Yeah. And shout out to Mama McCoy. Yeah. yeah. Mama Davis. Mama. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama, my wife's last name was Davis. Now she's blue. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I'm pointing. I ain't even got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, I was like, like, you know, Stone Cold. Oh, yeah. I see you. Oh, wait, hey, Stone Cold. You ever want to come on the Stone Cold? Like, you know Stone Cold, huh? Yeah, yeah, you from Texas. You better know Stone Cold. That's the goat. Come on. I do love my wife. Excuse me, Mary. Yeah, he, he gets like it's all good. It's all good. That's number two. Uh-huh. Um, close to the family. And number three was I was excited for the food scene. Hey. That tells us got some good food, too, no? It, no, it, it, it does. And the waters is another level. Trust me, I get it. But. I think they're so different. Yeah. Like, here, what, what y'all do, y'all do it in elite level. Say that again, man. Because they, like, they be trying to debate that on Twitter. If you have other cities trying going, to take the throne, it's like, come on now. I ain't going to lie to you. I think Texas has a little bit more variety of food that you can get, mm. but I think as far as like the y'all's like pure quality, Psh, another you level. Had a good pot of gumbo. Of course, and he probably had everything. Come on, huh? no. I'm just saying, no, no, I know, I know. All right, so then, what's the biggest difference from Texas? Because some of the cities, I'm obviously have some differences, but like, is there anything mm. where you like, whoa, this is not Texas? The more you've been in New Orleans, or even in just Louisiana, I think like you were saying earlier. The ease to get everywhere, like it takes twenty minutes to get get anywhere you want in the city. Facts. Twenty minutes. Boom. Fact. boom, boom. I appreciate I'm, that. I know we, it's a lot of potholes along those routes, but still, <laughs> <laughs> the timing right is great. Because I be in Texas and bro, everywhere you go, thirty minute, forty minute yeah. drive, and I'm like, yeah. good lord, yeah. I'm, you know, New Orleans. If I'm going to the dome, fifteen minutes if yeah. I get good traffic. Yeah. So you can get to the east. You can get to the West Bank. I can get back home from the dome. How often are you in the east? I say I've been over here probably about ten. Oh no, no, no! Oh, damn, you really east of? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, 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 be I'll, I'll be hooping in, uh, at a Thrive Nine sometimes. Oh, shout out to yeah, Thrive Nine! Yeah, I'll be hooping over there. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, let's see. I came over to eat off of Bullet Ave one time. You remember the spot? Cause Bullet got some. Nah, like, I'm, it was born and raised off this. So it was the other way. Was it so food? Cool? I got some wings. That's oh, oh they got some good wing spots out here. Yeah, some wings. I said, I'm trying to eat healthy now, so I can't <laughs> devour the way I used to but, or indulge. But yeah, the East got some good little spots. Yeah. People think the East yeah. is like has this stigma of being, they got some nice spots. Like, yeah, yeah. You can shit more than the game studios. 
So you, so you ain't, because when I text you the address, I was like, man, he going to be like, whoa, this dude is in the east. I don't know if I want to come. Oh, no, 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 no. You no. in the city, city. I, I like that. Yeah, I, I, try, to, I try to get around. I like around. that. And like you said, it's convenient. Like everything is a 15, 20-minute yeah, exactly. drive. So that's definitely, because in Texas, everywhere, you got to basically go. put an hour ahead of you, whatever you Absolutely. plan on doing, because you're like, I'm going to be out there for Absolutely. a hot minute. So I like that. I like that. Um, one thing I do want to mention is, one thing I do know for sure that you are involved in is rescuing dogs. <laughs> Uh, talk about your, and we got them queued up, Ziggy, go all the way down okay, to the so bottom, the dogs I here. believe, yeah, we got the dogs all the way down, Ziggy, yep, <laughs> those are only two, those are only two, right? Yeah, that's our only two, that's uh, Rico, whose face I'm holding, and then that's Rose, who down there with the, with Shut the green sweater on. Rico and Rose, I love the Christmas outfits, Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're ridiculous. And you rescued both of them, right? Yeah, rescued both of them back when we were on College Station, and they are the two laziest damn dogs you will ever meet in your life. <laughs> I don't know. My dog might have you beat. My dog is pretty. Dog. I got a French bulldog, and she just sleeps all day, which is a perfect dog for it's, me. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's nice, but I think I'm not. The, the good thing about them is that they are great travel dogs too. So like, when I pack up and go on the road tomorrow, they are gonna be in the back of the car, sleep. Yeah, no, like best mean, dogs. Like no barking, no craziness, no, chilling. So man, that's that's my babies. I love them. Um, damn. Yeah. With the uh, platform you have, do you want to do more rescue dogs in the future, or like? Just get involved with organizations Sheesh. that specialize in it or anything? I think that could be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't done anything here yet, but I think like rescue dogs is one of the most pure things that you can have. Yeah. Because they real. go from a lifetime of not having love, support, um, like hmm. truly I'm being. I'm not sure. Oh, support support series. Thanks a lot, Alexa. No, that's Alexa. Oh, Alexa. Alexa is trying to get her shine on. <laughs> See, we're really in the house, y'all. <laughs> um, but then, like, once they accept you and, like, they realize, like, you're not going to leave them, like, that love is, like, unlike anything else. Anything else. It shows on your Instagram when I was going through it. I like, this man really, really loves his dog. That's, that's my baby. Uh, which one, I'm about to maybe show you how deep into the trenches I got on your life story. Which one escaped your yard? Because about, I want to say it was two or three years ago, you yeah. went on Twitter yeah. and uh, you called for help for the city of New Orleans. And that was one of the, this shit more than a game moments and why this shit is more than a game. Because it felt like the whole city said, oh, shoot, Eric McCoy's dog is gone. You had a lot of people adding you saying, where Absolutely. you at, Eric? We'll come, you know, we'll send a whole troop, Absolutely. you know, we'll send the army to come find a dog. Absolutely. Uh, which one was the one that? It was uh, Rico, whose Rico. face I'm holding. All right. Now, I'm going to be honest. I thought it was a real sweet story. Like, you know, you wind up finding out that same yes. day, right? Yes. yes. Um, then I did more research and I saw the same thing happen to you in Texas. Yes, it did. Was it the same dog? Yes. Eric. At some point, it goes from cool and sentimental to you got to look at yourself in the mirror, bro. Like, if your dog is escaping multiple times, and you got to go on Twitter to yeah, find, yeah, find no, your dog. In two states, Eric? Wait, no, no, no. The other time, it was her. Oh, so, so they took turns. Yes, it was, it was her. It was her the other time. Them dogs be plotting. It was her the other time. So, well, okay, the time in Texas, they actually both got out, but I found him, uh-huh. and I couldn't find her. So, let me go back to the time in Texas. Yeah. So, this is my mistake. I was young. I was dumb. Like... Whatever. It was probably... He was a college kid. Yeah. But I left him outside during the day. Bad, terrible decision on my part. Terrible. I don't, know what, I don't know what month of the year it was. They dug a hole under the fence. Mm-hmm. Got my up. dog did that one time, so I know that pain. Yeah. I got, you. got up out of there like, it was what it was. <laughs> like, that, that's my mistake. It's hot outside. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. The time here is also my mistake. Yeah. And- <laughs> because I, I know they're terrified of fireworks. Oh, Ter- terrible! They be popping fireworks. in New Orleans. They be popping. <laughs> Sometimes be, they be, that fireworks was there. My neighborhood now it was war zone on uh, New Year's. But anyways, I let them out probably at like I want to say like eight o'clock. So I didn't think they was gonna be going off yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, well welcome to New Orleans, bro. Yeah. They, every hour of the day they popping fireworks. Yeah. That was your welcome to New Orleans experience right there. Them jokers went off. I I assume he jumped the fence because it was it was a pretty low fence. Yeah. But. I'm, I assume he jumped the fence, took off, and then. Yeah. All right, so here on a John O'Bond show, can you promise that you'll never? I'm gonna do out? my best. You got, you got the means. Like, see, in Texas, you didn't have the means. You got the, <laughs> you got the means now to get the best of the line yeah. fences that yeah. them dogs. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. that you were able to find it on. I yeah. thought it was real cool though. That in Texas and in Louisiana, but that's why the shit most in the game. Like the whole city came, came together, out. and yeah. they were like, "We got you, Eric." Absolutely. Did somebody find it, or did you wind up finding it? We ended up finding. So we was we was driving around the neighborhood, driving around the neighborhood. Um, and then he was actually hiding under a car, oh, probably so was, yeah. like 
three blocks down. Oh. So, like, but he had, I don't know, I, we didn't know how long he had been gone. Yeah. So, he was probably outside for, like, ten minutes. Like, he could have covered some ground in that, because he's, he's an athletic dog. He looks like it. Like, he could have covered some ground in it. He could have went towards airline. He could have went back towards the park. Like, but he ended up being about three blocks That's away. That's the thing what I learned about dogs, because my dog got out one time, and they want to get out, and then when they get out, they don't know what to do. And they're yeah. like, oh, I want to go back. Yeah, <laughs> That's why they, I think the dog night quarter day, I'm, when the joke was like, I'm just a... Crazy puppy, like when I finally catch it, the mailman or whatever, I don't know what to do with myself. You know, that's what the dogs are like, oh, I'm out. Now what? Um, but I'm glad that you were able to find mm -hmm. your dogs. And uh, Sean, you talked about Eric McCoy having some gumbo. That brings me up to a good uh, question, Eric. What is your favorite New Orleans dish? Oof. You love the food, so I, I mean, do. I do. You know, I say like this because sometimes it's hard to pick one. I get that. No, no, no. If I, you I have, know. if you own that road final meal, what would you pick for oh, your New Orleans dish? I love some shrimp and grits. Mmm. Barbecue it's, or just regular? Don't matter. Oh, any flavor. Don't matter. I like it. <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know if that's considered. Is that a New Orleans dish or is that a Louisiana dish? Uh, it's considered a New Orleans dish. I think Louisiana claims Yeah, Louisiana claims Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana claims Louisiana a lot of New Orleans things in general. That's so, true. Okay. I mean, Louisiana's going to claim ray beans, Louisiana. You like ray beans? Yeah. yeah shout out to my dog, Hold the Mayor. I don't know if you've seen his content. He does ray beans and rice Monday every uh Every okay, Monday. I heard about him. Yeah, he, he, he's doing him. some big thing. That's my dude over there. Uh, and he, you know, he's got the love of Ray Beans in the city. <laughs> getting it. I'm not, I'm going to be honest, I grew up not being the biggest fan of Ray Beans because we had it every Monday. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, I don't want this every Monday. But I've grown to appreciate it a lot more yeah. in time. Uh, shrimp and grits is cool, though. Dog, I love shrimp and grits. It's not, about, it's not even in my top five, though. That's crazy, though. I love, but listen, okay. Let, let's be honest here. Like, it's like shrimp and grits, gumbo. Tight. Seafood stool. Tight. Like, it's, it's, like it's, it's, John, you know, yeah, level, yeah, yeah, yeah. Level two. I like it though. <laughs> but these are like mini levels though. Like, they're not, they're not very high. Yeah. Like, but, okay, what's your top five? Oh, you gave me five. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite you said for sure. You not in your top five. So. No, 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 no. Let's give everybody involved. We would say everybody's favorite dish. I think if I was on that row, I had one last New Orleans meal, I'm pretty sure I'm going with a po' boy. And I'm probably okay. going with a uh, fried catfish. Fully dressed but no tomatoes, and I like cheese in my fried catfish. So I'm probably going with pork boy. Ziggy, what you going with? You had one last New Orleans meal. One last New Orleans meal. I think I would have to go with um, some. I had to go with some gumbo, bro. Gumbo. Yeah. With some gumbo. You like regular gumbo, or okra? Because okra's oh, with my the favorite. Okra, yeah, okra's I love okra. Yeah. Sean. So what? Seafood or chicken and andouille? Ooh. I like, I like both, and but if I had to pick one, seafood. I go seafood. With oysters, without oysters. I throw that in there too. I like oysters. I'm not an oysters yeah. guy. I'm not an oysters guy. I'm not an oysters guy. Yeah, yeah. I like fried oysters, yeah. boiled. Uh, oh. Was it? Was it char? Was it char? Char ball. Y'all making me hungry, man. I'm, try, I'm trying I'm to eat down. well for my wife because I'm trying to get my health together. You know, health as well. Now y'all got me hungry, Sean. Oh, half and half, whole boy, shrimp and oysters. Well. Done. Oh wow, you go ham. Full dress. Oh, full dress. Ooh. Ooh. Hot. Yes, tomatoes. <laughs> Hey, hey, so uh, when um the hot sausage. When you and uh well first off, these crawfish prices are crazy. You like crawfish? Yeah. These crawfish prices are crazy. I'm just the roof. I'm just throwing that out there right Ooh. now. Get it together. Okay. Uh <laughs> when um you and your office alignment go out, how how high is the bill? Because that's some big dude. And, and do y'all do like credit card roulette or is it like, <laughs> oh well, this guy gave up a sack this week, so now you gotta pay. No, 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 no. I'm really kind of embarrassed. Y'all actually should do that, by the way. That might motivate everybody, but oh, I ain't giving them no sack. I that's not a bad idea. Hey, remember what you heard it first. Remember what you heard it first. It's not a bad idea. Um, so normally, it's like, if you are a practice squad guy, you don't do any. I like that. I appreciate like, that, too, because obviously they're not making. Yeah. Like, I like that. You don't, you don't do any. If you get elevated, oh, you, do, yeah. you, 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 you might end up having to do one. <laughs> nah, um, but it normally starts off with the youngest guy. So they're week one. So uh -huh. like this year, it was... Nick Salvador, Salvador. Uh huh. Nick. Yep. I love Nick. I can. I can never remember if it's the D first in his last name or the V. <laughs> um, Shout out to Nick. He was week one, and then it was like. And Penny, right? If yeah, it was by. probably Trevor. Somebody else. Somebody else sees me. But then who is the oldest one? Because we got a young. Is it Caesar? Is Caesar the oldest now? Oldest. Caesar Ruiz. Yeah. Well, because Caesar was Caesar. Twenty four. Were you before Caesar or after? I was before. Uh, so you don't want to stand. No. We still got Ram in the room. Oh, Ram. I'm doing a blank. Yeah. Ram, no, Ram's probably the oldest as of guys that I know were on the team. Yeah, because right Ram now. came in 2018. That was a damn good draft class, too, yeah. bro. Ram we should have won a Super Bowl off that one. I still get mad about that. Um, well, I like that y'all do a rotation, though. And yeah, not, yeah, it's not going to be one person yeah. every week. Now, if, if... Are we talking four figures, or...? Uh, yeah. 
No, I mean, there's a lot of people. No, I had to, I had to think. <laughs> do y'all have like a favorite spot that y'all go to every week or do y'all try to? No, no, we try to switch it up. So I would say some of the favorites have been Paladar 511. Uh-huh. Um, Places that we never ate at because we ain't rich. So. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, it's uh, the doubles. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Cam. Y'all stupid. He about, to, he, he about to name all the fancy places. We no, like, no, 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 yeah, no. we know about it, but we never had it before. And then uh, an Indian spot called Saffron. And then um, a steakhouse in Metairie called Austin's. Hmm. So that's you got Italian, you got Indian, you got yeah, a steakhouse. Like I said, those are like three of the favorites. Do they get they get excited when y'all come in? They're like, yeah, we. Oh, they they know we from they know we from act up, <laughs> and they they know we finna act up. Do you do you get recognized a lot in the city? Um, because always a lot of the probably like the most obscure positions, unless you yeah, like yeah, really yeah. go out your way to become noteworthy, like. Even like some of the greatest offensive linemen can walk down the street and people won't realize that yeah, that's absolutely. a football player. I feel like there's a lot of assumption just yeah, because I'm like you. I'm a big dude. Yeah. Um, but I would say, I mean, at the restaurants I get recognized, <laughs> obviously, because I be because I be in there. Right. <laughs> um, right. But outside of that, like, not really. Like I'm just walking down the street. No, nah, not really. <laughs> but I got I got one dude that works at the mall, the janitor. That's my dog, Reginald. Shout out to Reginald. I say every every time I see Reginald, he he in there like he recognizes me. Yeah. Um, that's my dog. Shout out to Reginald. Uh, I think you might be a lot because you did Mardi Gras parade this year. Was this your first time actually riding in it? No, I rode in it last so year. You did it two years in a row. Yeah. Same parade, right? Y'all always do. Yeah. That New Orleans Saints uh, sponsored one. Mm. Um, how fun was that? It was great. Um, it's awesome, huh? Ain't no city like it. Nah, Ain't no city like like I, I love I love Mardi Gras season. That's my first. That's my favorite time of the year. Oh, I, we, we. You know what? We got proof because they can go all the way at the bottom and put. We're gonna pull up this video. Damn, so I we know that you and the squad Damn, was, was at uh, Mardi Gras. You go right there, Ziggy. We know you and the squad was at Mardi Gras. Like, you having a good man? You, you had the do rag on you. <laughs> See, that's got a hair braided too. So I was really. You had on your mind that yeah, night, huh? You was, had on I your was, mind. I was really out here. And then. And then, let me show you how we know you had a good time. Because I know this Mardi Gras face anyway. I know that Mardi Gras face. That is a, I'm having a head of a time. I'm having a head of a time. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Pause it. That is a head of a time. He's having a head of a time. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you ain't got to be too transparent. Well, you pretty lit right there. Just, you just enjoying the weather. Um, What's the atmosphere right there in that picture? I was having a good time. It was a beautiful day. It was. We had great uh, weather for Mardi Gras. It was, this year. it was amazing. It was a beautiful day. I had maybe had a couple beers. Man, never hurt nobody. Never this is no judgment zone. Matter of fact, I probably had some king cake. Oh, wish you have a favor, uh, favorite. I swear, man, that, that Dawn Fong. Yes, man. yes. I a round of applause for Dawn Fong. I, I know Dawn Fong does sponsors, but we'll take. I, I love Dawn Fong. Dawn Fong like, is one of the places where it, it gets so much hype now that people starting to like try to yeah, yeah, yeah. hate on it because yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, some places that get the hype is worthy yeah, of the hype. Dawn Fong is top. I know. I mean, shout out to Manny Randazzos and all those people. Dawn Fong is. That's the only one I haven't had. You gotta try some other ones then too. You got at least no, no. That's girl. the only one I haven't had was is Randazzo. Oh, I, I haven't had. had oh, try. You gotta try Randazzo. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't have all of them besides many Randazzos. All right, um, man, that don't phone boy. Be they had that on the float. No. Nah. <laughs> so let's so, <laughs> go. I you know you I, slump, uh, there's only one person who has had, who probably had a better Mardi Gras than you, and that was me, because I had a damn good Mardi Gras. So that's what I'm saying. So no judgment zone. Dog. What, what happens at Mardi Gras stays at Mardi Gras. You got on Black Forces. That's how I actually Chris Paul should have, again. I was okay. Ball Ball, okay. Chris I, Paul. I couldn't see that for when him. he was in New Orleans, he gave us every year he would give us his signature shoe. Uh, Lyndon was a ball boy too, so Lyndon got those same shoes. No, you still got those shoes? Yeah, yeah man. They, uh, mine started iron, so that's how good of a Mardi Gras I had. The soles came off Jeez. throughout the whole trip. But I had, a, <laughs> I had. A, that's why this shit more than a Tuesday, Eric. Right? Like it's more than a Tuesday. Right. I think. I think. I think. You know. I think. Everywhere on, else is Tuesday. Only me. Only I can rival the my. <laughs> The Mardi Gras that you had. Um, it's the beads. I know. The long beads. The, oh, sag, uh, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the pants, the sagging. And then the, I told my wife before and the, the day. Beanie, even I was like, cold. I was like, honey. Uh, <laughs> beanie, you know, it wasn't cold. I was like, Clarissa, we're going to have a chill day. We're just going to go sightsee. And then, you know, a few hours later, that was me. So, <laughs> Aaron Dowell just retired. Mm. Who is the toughest player that you've gone against in your NFL career? So far, I want to say him, but that wouldn't be truthful. I think he's. I think he is. Well, you got somebody before Donald. No, 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 no. I just, I truthfully haven't had to block him that much. Really? So, so from from me to say like he's the best I played, 
that wouldn't be truthful because I, I, yeah, no, I, I rarely block him. Because sometimes I think he, we chip against him sometimes. Yeah, but. Like, yeah. I'm not an offensive line guru, but. Do I think he's the best ever? Absolutely. Yeah, that makes Sean so happy. So, all respect to him. Like, mm-hmm. he a dog. Like, all respect to him. He, nah, well, because you're a son. I was like, he almost got, he probably got you drafted because he heard Drew. Then the next year, we say, we got to get Aaron McCoy on oh, that, that, that was the year I got drafted. You was in that game? Yeah, I was in that game. Dang. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the game y'all rapped yeah. again. Because remember Cam Jones had that touchdown that they cut, they blew the whistle that. thing. I don't. I mean, I know. I mean, I know why the referees don't like us. Yes. You ain't got to say it. We uh, know referees <laughs> don't like us. But the best I played, I would say Dexter Lawrence with New York. Mm, mm, he's and, good. and I'm not gonna lie to you. He was. He was. He wasn't even fully healthy our game. Dang. And I was. I was like, damn, bro, you were dog. But well, you know what's crazy is that I feel like after week one, and I saw Carl say it's like nobody's ever healthy after the first day of training camp, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So y'all. Never really playing 100 percent of y'all still making the plays that y'all made. That's crazy. Y'all really are like the most amazing athletes in the world. So you say you got Dexter Lawrence. He's a he's a dog. Uh, a sleeper that no one's actually gonna truly think about or even mention. Al Woods. Al Woods. Big Al. Oh. Big Al that was here. Yeah. Shout out to shoot. Al Woods. Big Al is a dog. Big Al. I say Big Al, but he's huge. Yeah. And strong as hell. And he got these baby blue eyes. <laughs> like, he just be looking yeah. at you, bro. I'd be like, man. <laughs> <laughs> Big Aller dog. I, I, shout out um, to LSU with that, then. Them two for sure. Let me think of who else. Do you have a one oh, that's... Oh, I'm, I'm tripping. Grady Jarrett. Ooh, yeah. I, I, I feel like Grady yeah. is the most underappreciated defensive lineman in the NFL. And you had him twice a year. Twice a year. And I, I'm, I know he's a Falcons player. Like, yeah. Grady Jarrett is a dog. After Falcons, always. Uh, yeah. I can respect he's, great players. I, I, was saying, I, I respect greatness. I think he's the most underappreciated D-line in the NFL. Shout out to Grady. Well, I ain't going to say shit. He's a Falcon. I'm sorry. That's a rule in this shit more than the game. No love to Falcons players or anything of that franchise. But I, I, I respect that answer. You have a player that's like the most annoying, like, I hate this guy. And if you don't want to say it on camera, you ain't got to. But I know like Cam John hated, uh, I think it was Ryan Jensen, uh, Sample Bay. So uh, I'm like, I'm sure every player has a player oh, like that. Matt I hate, Ryan. I hate this guy. I'm I hate playing. this guy. Um, I got one, but I'm not going to say You it. ain't got to say it. That's cool. I, I'm, That's cool. I'm not no beef star. Yeah, no, no. no, no. That's we, just we, not me. We ain't, we ain't trying to, you know, set you up for that. <laughs> uh, no, 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 let's just ask one. Is it a division rival player? <laughs> No comment. It's all great. It's all good. <laughs> I can't lean either. I can't give you an yeah, inclination either you. way. Yeah. NFC, yeah. AFC? Yeah, you can't even say that. You can't even say that. No. Not AFC. No. All right. So, all right. NFC, and then, you know, maybe we'll do the math because there's only so many people. You know, we'll. Yeah, we'll we'll, 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 <laughs> 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 and you know, if this shit, well, we got your back now. Yeah, if there's yeah, a player know, that's know, like know, taking cheap shots or something next year. Yeah. Uh, let us know. Let us know. Sure. You, you, you bind it by this shit more than the game now. So, <laughs> um, uh, fun question we want to ask is. Yeah. Uh, who is on your center Mount Rushmore? My center Mount Rushmore. Obviously, Jason Kels. Do you think he's Kelsey. the greatest of all time? I think he's the greatest of our generation. Gotcha. I, I, I don't like to compare greatest of all time. It's hard I, I, don't it's like that's, I don't feel like that's fair of me because every generation requires yep, a different yep, type of center. Yep, yep. Um, or a different type of player in general. I like Jason Kelsey. How many people are on Mount Rushmore? Four? Yeah. Um, I like Travis Frederick. Um, who I think could end up being there is Frank Ragnall. He's playing right now with Detroit. Um, geez, let me think. That's my three that I'll give you right now because those mm-hmm. are the three that I can remember just off the top of my head, and I've actually watched their tape and watched them play. So mm-hmm. I feel like it's unfair of me to like be like, Jeff Saturday, Dermonte Dawson, because I haven't truly watched those guys play. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to discredit anybody that's been playing recently and I just haven't, can't remember. Yeah, nah. Oh, I'm Max Unger. From New Orleans? Right, yes. He was good. No, he was a dog. He was good. I, uh, I think some fans have a little hesitancy to give him love because we traded Jimmy Graham for him. Yeah. But he was also very critical to uh, the operations for the New Orleans thing. I like that Absolutely. answer. I like I, that answer. And you replaced him, then I'm doing a blank. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he retired in 18, and then I got here in 19. So you ever got to meet him or like talk to him? Just once. Cool. Because he he doesn't live around here. Yeah, yeah. He's um, in Seattle. Nah, I don't know where. I think he lives Hawaii, maybe. Must be, so, must be nice. Uh, but I think he was born and raised there too. 
I think. Um, but like 19 and 20, 21, like that's who I tried to model my game after. Mm. That's a good player too, bro. Like he was a. The more I've gone, I w- went back and watched his film. And my line coach at the time, he was like all in on Max Unger. So like we used to watch it together. Mm-hmm. Um, bro, he was a dog. Yeah, like I think he's extremely underrated in terms of um, centers in New Orleans history, mm-hmm. centers in the NFL history. I don't know if people in the background can hear the door open. That's my brother. That's how <laughs> in home we are. Just got off the, just got off the class. He's a big fan too. I'm sure you're gonna be real. Yeah, yeah. He's probably, oh shoot, I got Eric McCoy. Nope. <laughs> I got Eric McCoy in the crib. Uh, that's a good, that's a good Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Names I actually know too, because again, like the offensive line position, unless you are legendary or like a character, y'all are probably the most underappreciated positional uh, ranking of all of all sports, to yeah. be honest. So. Uh, for me to know those names, those are some legends. I hope that one day people feel like you are in that cat. You ever think about your post football career? I know it's, you still, you know, so you got a lot of football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. But do you ever think, oh, man, after the, I'm done, what I want to do is, I mean, shout out to give you a suggestion right now. You could probably get into this podcast and stuff. You're real good at it. I could. But That's, honestly, I this might sound like really lame, but I truthfully just want to be a simple person. I want to love my wife. Awesome. I want to have kids and love my kids. I want to fish. I really, I really enjoy fishing. That's like my. That's what part of my offseason stuff. Like I really enjoy fishing. You in the um, right state. You in the right state for that. I know. <laughs> Trust me. I, I know. <laughs> I'll be out there. And then uh, you got tickets on a fishing trip one day. That would be some good content. Yeah, I'm like, not alone. Y'all fish? Yeah, I fish. I say it, it's <laughs> okay. I, I love it. One of like the it. three students out there with me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, and then I want to learn how to. Um, Grow a garden, like grow and tend a garden. That's not lame at all. That's like I feel like that. I, I just feel like that's, that's, yeah. Like I don't have like any super big like. This is like I have these big dreams or whatever. Like truthfully, like I want to love my wife. I want to love my kids. Yeah, and you got a uh, generational well, which congratulations. That's awesome. That had to be. I always want to act in NFL play. Like the day you signed a contract and yours was uh, over sixty million. Like. What what is that feeling? And I pray that one day <laughs> we can have a little bit yes, of what that feeling is. Absolutely. Uh, you being on our I show might get us to maybe, if we get seven figures one day, we'll be like, yeah. We, <laughs> but 60, over 60 minutes, like, how, what was that day like? What was that feeling like? Like, whoa. Dog, like, my kid's kiss is going to be good. My parents are set for life. Uh, I ain't going to lie to you. It is indescribable. I bet. Um, because not only, like, are your kids set and only is your family set? It's like, damn, everything that I worked for for the past 15 years of my life, mm. like even more so than when you got drafted, like everything I worked for the past 15 years of my life has come into fruition. Everything that I prayed for for the last 15 years of my life has come to, to fruition. And like the emotion of it, like I posted a picture of it when after it happened, bro, like I was like, I was cheesing. <laughs> I bet. Like, 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 you you like, probably with the seat like. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that it's, type of money, boy. You ain't gonna never look. It, it was oh, my face. <laughs> my dog got out the cage that same day. I was like, hey, y'all, my dog is. <laughs> I need to also sign a sixty million dollar contract. Shit. Uh, but it 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 was unbelievable, indescribable. So I I am forever grateful to the organization and the city. Mm-hmm. Like help make that happen. You deserve it. You really. It's not, it's not something I could have done on my own. So and, yeah, and, and of course, shout out moms. Oh yeah. Shout out pops, grandparents. Shout out wife. Because that is. Shout out to the parents. Because the foundational piece. Yes, absolutely. Because I couldn't do. What I feel I, the same way in my own little world of content. Like yeah. this is all because of the people my crew right here, yeah. my mom and dad for you know whenever I told them you know we got to do this, my brother for like so I know how important that family foundation of my sister. Uh, I know that. So. Absolutely. And, you know, we aim, like, one day, man, we can set up our families for life. That would be great. So I'm glad that you were in that position. That, and then when you retire, man, like you said, you can just chill. That's, that's you don't want to be in the public eye, and you just want to, like, I had my time. I'm telling you, you could be a podcaster now. You could be the Aaron Rodgers of our show, like, you know, weekly sex. <laughs> <laughs> without, without the craziness. <laughs> You know, we don't need you running for vice president with uh, yeah, you ain't Senator Kennedy or whatever. Yeah, you but, yeah, that's the one thing you ain't got to worry about. <laughs> so, Eric, what, uh, I'm sorry, is it? Yes. Uh, what, what, what type of advice you would give to, uh, I know you said you came from a small town in mm-hmm. Texas. Um, you got a lot of people that's inspired to do whatever it may be. What type of advice you would give to anybody that's just trying to 
play football or just anything in general. Do you live by a certain principles and morals, which I'm sure you do, but what is something that you live by and what advice would you give to some of the younger generation coming up, you know, ready to follow in your footsteps someday? You can't be half in, half out. Mm. Like, if you if you in it, like, bro, you got to be in it. Right. Like, everything that you do, like, I say this, but in the off-season, like, I kind of chill. But, like, everything that you're doing needs to revolve around is how, will this affect what I want to do in the future? Like, academics, mm -hmm. stay, like, staying out of trouble. So even if it's women... Drinking drugs, like you, like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take care of Especially all of that, bro. Like social you media, nah. yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like you can't, you can't be BSing around with all that. And I think, like that might just be my personal opinion, but like you gonna miss birthday parties, you gonna miss weddings, like they don't see that. They don't see that part of it. They the don't game. see. They don't see that part of it. They don't see that part of it. And you're not gonna have your own birthday, bro. Like for the past what year, five. You a football season uh, birthday? I'm, I'm a camp birthday. Damn. I haven't, I haven't celebrated my birthday in probably 10 years. You know when I knew my wife was the one? When I knew that she'd have a birthday during football season. I said, all right. That was one of my requirements. <laughs> but, like, for real, like, you, you, can't, you can't be half in, half out with it. I'll say that's the biggest piece of advice. Like, if you want to be dedicated to the game, bro, be dedicated to the game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, do you have an outlook for Texas A&M this year on how you think y'all going to do? I can't give you a record prediction. Oh, I like that even better. I said I, said I can't. Oh, oh, no, 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 Find y'all way going at each other? Nope. Damn, I would pay to see that. Nope. I would not. I would pay to see that. He is freaking. I would not pay to see that. <laughs> you do not want to see that. You know I'm about I don't want to see that. that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and then new head coach hire. Excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really defensive minded guy. I think that's something that can be beneficial. Um, can't remember who hired is. You got. You about to get the A&M fans excited? Hey, listen. I'm, I'm not that you're biased or anything, but I'm 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 very biased, <laughs> very very biased. Um, that's my people over there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, but we back to playing Texas, so that's mm. that's extremely exciting, mm. extremely exciting. Because I mean, I never played them. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited that that rivalry is going to be back. Yeah. Unless they they take lose, it serious which, down in Austin, by oh, the way. Yeah. Bro, I know. It's it's serious, but it's it's more than a game. Hey, you know, it's more than a game. And I usually don't give it to Texans, but yeah, all right, <laughs> all right, we'll give them that. We'll give them that. <laughs> so yeah, I think they can be. Do you? How out of touch with social media do you aspire to be? Because Saints Twitter and Saints social media in general gets crazy. Yeah. Do you make it a point to say I love the fans, but <laughs> I gotta for my mental health. Stay away from it. Do you dive into it every now and then? In season, I give myself one day a week. Okay. On on a Tuesday. That's like that's our off day. Yeah. Like I get on social media for a little bit. I got, I got the time restraints on my phone. It's an hour. Oh wow. Hour, yeah. Hour limit. That's it's in different. season. Hour limit. And I'm like, well. <laughs> Especially after losses, bro. Man, bro. <laughs> I'll be the main one probably. <laughs> Babe, hey, bro, like it's it's a day. You do it because we there. care. I know, I know. We I do know, it because we care. I know, I know. I know. You are, you are actually one of us, like you know, you beloved down here. So I just be chilling. <laughs> I know a lot of younger generation, like they grew up on social media. So as the generations continue to come to, the younger generation continues to get drafted to like a lot of them be on their bro, phones. They be on their phones. Yeah, bro. so like they see like. Be fans, it's a new day and age, Eric, that fans can interact. You know, sometimes the fans go at the players crazily. Sometimes, you know, the players interact back. Uh, but it's kind of showing the way of the world in 2024. I mean, God damn, look, dude, you are at a fan's house. Like, that is historical. That's, I, I don't have the historical data behind this, but I am going to bet that I can count on one hand how many NFL players, active NFL players, and damn sure NFL Pro Bowl players have come, pulled up to a fan's crib to do an interview or just to come kick it with him and a crew. So we are like humble and 
excited and all types of words I can throw out. But like that's major, and that just kind of shows where fanaticism and fandom is in 2024. So there's a lot of negative, and you have a much bigger platform. I mean, I have a very niche platform, but mm. even I kind of see the ugly side. You know, people don't like my content or whatever. <laughs> but I know like how crazy the tweets can get because everybody's brave behind the phone. But very I've brave. also seen, because I technically, B so, very brave. social media built this for me. And social media has Eric yeah. McCoy on my couch. <laughs> like, so I, I am, I don't have any time limits on my uh, social media. I'm on air. You know, I almost feel like that's where the future, as far as where careers can actually be headed at. But I'm glad for your mental health that you don't be too in-depth on Saints Twitter, because nah. Saints Twitter can get a little rowdy, especially... Like Three years without making the playoffs, it's a, it's it a great place, but... It can I, be a dangerous place. Yeah, I mean, hey, sometimes this shit more than the game isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Uh, God, I'm, I'm going to say something after that. So if you have messaged me on Twitter, Instagram, and I haven't responded, that's why. Yeah, I, that's why I was so honored when, you know, you messaged me back. Because I was like, when have you actually even seen my content? Some of the, you know, I've seen some. I'll be on the Instagram a little bit. Okay. But, like, I've, I've seen you on Twitter, and I've seen you on oh, Instagram. Yeah, well, like, oh, all right, yeah, cool, whatever. Because it's shit more than the game. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, we don't want to keep you too long, Eric. Uh, Ziggy, Sean, y'all got any final questions? Or yeah, comments? I did have a, one question for Eric. Um, not you, gentlemen, but of course for Eric. <laughs> um, just playing. Um, what, what are one of the things that you are most thankful for uh, as you think back on? Um, you kind of alluded to it, but I wanted to kind of maybe uh, internalize it in the question. But, like, what is one of the things you are most thankful for um, as you look back at um, your career and where you're at right now? Mm. Yeah, all right, that's a good one. Being on his show, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's up there. It's up there. Um, get him play two years with Drew Brees. This is in no particular order. The GOAT. But being Drew Brees center for two years, being thankful that we made the playoffs for two years, my first two years, I would say overall I've been pretty healthy. Like I've had nagging things here and there. Um, but as far as like major big surgeries, I haven't had any of those yet. Not going to work. Yeah, I'll say yet. That's why I said yet. I'm just going to enjoy y'all. Um, because you, you hear about guys like they've had right. three career innings, career, not career, ugh, Dude. season ending injuries three years in a row. And that's like, that's hard. That's hard to come back from. Mm -hmm. um, but guys can still keep playing. Um, I would say the ability to take care of my wife, my okay. dogs, and my like, immediate family. Um, Your wife sounds like the real MVP. Shout out to her. She is, bro. That's, that's my backbone. Shout out to Bianca. That's, that's my backbone. Let's give a round of applause for Bianca. <laughs> I know first hand with my wife. Shout out to Carissa too, so. And y'all gonna hear it in the post production. We're gonna give her some air horns too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, no, she truthfully keeps yeah. me sane. Like she keeps me going. That's awesome. Um Let me think, what else? There's gotta be at least one more thing. Being on no, this show. This, uh, well, well I'm, com I'm coming around to that. All right, right. All right. <laughs> I would no, this I was gonna tie it into that. I would say that I'm super thankful to be in this city. Mm. Because I think that it's truly a unique place. Facts. Um, as far as like the culture, the people, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anywhere else like it. Yes. So I've been super grateful for the experiences that I've had here, interacting with people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just getting to meet people and connect with people here. Because um, when y'all are passionate about something, like y'all passionate. Hey. Like that's what this means. Football, Mardi Gras, food, food like, food, yeah. <laughs> like yo, when y'all are in it, y'all in it, bruh. <laughs> And so I really appreciate that. Except Sean. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know how he... He's a bandwagon. Everybody, uh, a little uh, just courtesy. Yeah, Sean is a Rams fan. And born and raised in New Orleans, but the greatest show on turf. You know, he, a young, impressionable kid. He turned to the bandwagon, and he's been riding that wagon ever since. <laughs> but we give him a hard time for it every time. That's what we're thankful for, though, Eric. Like you said, the culture. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I think it's so significant that you came to the crib. Like, again, I don't have the historical data in front of me, but I'm pretty sure I could count on one hand how many players come to a fan's house to kick it with him and his crew. And that it is a New Orleans Saints player, and it's in New Orleans, Louisiana, New Orleans East of all places. Like, where else will you get that, right? Where are you? Yeah. And it might be the start of like, player scenes, and now it's gonna become a dame, but like, I feel like what we're doing here, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my ass, your ass, or anything like that, but like, it's, I think it's kind of where the norm is going, of where players interacting with fans and showing how much more this shit more than the game. But I just want people to know Historically, while we have this on footage, that it started in New Orleans because this <laughs> shit more than the game. Whatever great content creator, whatever team player from other states and cities does this in the future, God bless you. I want that. But it started in New Orleans. Sean, 
I don't know why. Well, I, 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 oh, yeah. I had a follow up, but um, one thing is, is a, it is a, a kind of a, a full circle moment because a little bit of backstory on us is uh, we all went to high school together uh, here in New Orleans. So shout, shout out, out to, to Holy Cross. Shout out to Holy Cross. Um, and I know uh, John and Sean, y'all went to middle school together. Shout out right? to Bishop Perry Middle School. So, yeah. <laughs> so, like, we would, we would do these, like, drafts and stuff in class and different things like that, like drafting players and different things like that. And, like, kind of fast forward and now to 2024, we're. You know, we're doing a podcast with a... Uh, right, we got a Saints player. Right, Saints player. I'm like, this is, this is pretty cool, McCoy, man. I mean, I, you, you the coolest dude in the world. Like, when we were going back, I'm like, this dude, does he realize he's a Saints Pro Bowl center? But maybe you don't appreciate, like, your stature in the city. New Orleans Saints is huge down here. But, bro, diehard sports fans, I would say diehard Saints fans, but this... Sports fans. <laughs> I have respect. Look, I have respect for the Saints organization. Well, now he does. Now he does. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? That on the I show. Give props. I give props to the props of doing it. Uh-huh. I'm going to just say that. Let's just give you a show. Sean, 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 why we got a Saints player here? Can you just please say in 2018 that the oh. Saints got right? We got a Saints player. You ain't going to so say it. But Eric's not going to like the other footage neither. So we, I don't think we should do that at all. Yeah, you lost the bet, remember? When Ryan we ain't run like that. Well, all right. Okay. We yeah, y'all losing to the Rams, by the way, made me do something that I didn't want to yeah. do, Eric. So yeah, y'all owe me for next year. I'm sorry. Anyway, okay. <laughs> the, la- the last question I have for Eric. Yeah, let me hear. Well, it's not football related or anything, yeah. but like, do you play like any video games or anything like that? That's a video game right there. Do you, do you there, get into uh, any of that or not really? I would say in college, I was a huge gamer. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not going to say huge. I feel like, because there, there's huge gamers out there. Yeah. Like, like PC, I, I didn't have all that. Okay. Um, But in college, I played a decent amount of video games. Okay. I feel like... As life has hit me, I've kind of fallen off a little bit, a lot of bit. I I, I have a PS5. I ain't even freaking touched it since, huh? since July. Huh. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> like, is, <laughs> but I will say, probably my favorite game of all time is Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. And that was PS5, best game I ever played. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. For those that know, it's like a samurai game. You go around and you know. Just that man knows his games, man. Yeah. That, that's always just like the little, the, you know, the man behind the helmet. You know, man under yeah. the helmet. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you like yeah. to get into? Sean, you got. What any... about TV shows? I love I do like know. anime, anything like that, or like uh, not sitcom, anime, The Simpsons. But I would say so. Recently, I've watched. I'm in the middle of watching Shogun. Okay. Um, I pretty much watched all the Star Wars stuff. Mm. Okay. I said the, the newest season of Bad Batch. I'm waiting for that to finish up, and then I'm gonna watch it all at once. I know you mentioned you mentioned Harry Potter earlier. You like you like Harry Potter? I haven't gotten into it. Okay, okay. I haven't gotten into it. it. But I'll okay. tell you what else I have gotten into is like the uh, the whole Yellowstone universe. Mm. Okay, like 1883, 1923, Yellowstone. Like I'm into all that. Like I, 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 I grew up watching westerns <laughs> because my grandpa was like, I mean, he was born in '47, maybe, uh-huh. and so like. That's that's what I spent a lot of time with growing up. So we just watch westerns all day, yeah. and that's kind of like Texas, will you? Yeah, it is, like <laughs> truly, <laughs> truly, truly, <laughs> truly, truly, truly. Like, so I, lo- I love watching that type of stuff. But I have a wide variety of things that I watch. I say, and then my wife, she loves, <laughs> she loves most random things. So I watch those with her. I was about to say you get you get kind of sucked that's into a good husband. some of the shows my wife, that she watches. Oh yeah, bro, my wife be watching Love Is Blind. I'm like, nope, nope, I'm on the couch. <laughs> that ain't me. That ain't me. But I do make her watch the sports games. So I feel like it's uneven, but. Yeah, this more than a game. Why are we on your favorite? Who's your favorite artist, music artist? Oh, mm. yeah. See, that's what I want to get into. I, I feel like I'm gonna break it up into different genres. Okay. <laughs> I love Chris Stapleton. Hey. I love Chris Stapleton. You're as smooth. I gotta sing. It's Tennessee whiskey. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. I thought people like my singing voice. No. So I love Chris Stapleton. I, I'll be truthful here. I listen to a lot of country music. Like in I Texas, I get it. I might not. Have the look of somebody. Beyonce's that. about to get a lot of people into that uh, country genre because yeah. I like country too. I'm not like a huge fan, but I'm like y'all be missing out by not it's listening to it's, some. It's of a these. whole, it's a whole another genre that I didn't that I grew up listening to, then I fell off in college. But yeah. now I like Chris Stapleton. My wife be putting me on. Luke mm-hmm. Combs. Hey, my wife be putting me on these people, bro. Jordan Davis from Shreveport. Hey, he, shout out Jordan he's, Davis. He's up and coming, I feel like. Uh huh. Um, and then my favorite rapper of all time is J Cole. I'm, I'm with that. I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big Cole guy. Um. Who you know what, what, what we got? Let's do it. Uh, your Mount Rushmore for uh, rappers. For rappers? Yeah. And it's, it's yours, so you ain't got to be yeah, like yeah, the yeah, most talented. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm hoping you say my favorite artist, but I'm going to let you go. I like Wayne. I love, of course, Local Dog. Yeah, you know he's a yeah. Packers fan, huh? Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Kinda, yeah. Come on, Wayne. <laughs> I like Wayne. I love, I love Cole. Like, of course. Um, look at who else. 
Because you got to think, I was born in 97. So yeah, I, I get I, it. It's I ain't, I ain't really grow up with like the 90s hip hop. I grew up with the 90s and 2000s R&B. Like, I was on that. Oh, but shit. I was on that. Um, there's two. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I don't know if y'all consider Drake a rapper. Yeah, he's a rapper. Okay. He, he, he's a little mix of everything. Yeah, he's but an he's, like a he's an artist. He's an artist. He's an artist. Yeah. He's a, hey, shout out to Drake. He's a rapper. I appreciate Drake. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm going to keep it up with you. I don't really listen to rap music like that anymore. Wow. All right, well, Hold I'm on. Wait right here. You got one more. Oh, you got one more. Yeah, one more. I, I, got, a, I got a question for you. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear the question because I'm going to no, say No, no, no. That's going to be cheap, no, man. Come on. No, no, no. You got to say your four and then I'll actually. Yeah, you got to say your four. Come on. Yeah. Damn. I might have to look at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. all right, all right, I'll help give me you. some options. I need right. some options. Well, well, it should be Eminem, the greatest of all well, time. Well, that's the question. If you had to take your pick, who do you think is better as a rapper, not artist overall? Oh, God. Uh, Jay Z or Eminem? I'm sorry that hey, we, me and Sean are putting a personal this, vendetta this that we've gone for 20 better. years, but oh, anyway, yeah. I got it. And I, we're not going to be mad at all. This has been an argument for decades. Yes, decades. decades. Yeah. Eminem doesn't get his respect, their, their even styles, though he has to their go. styles are so different. I agree. Yeah? So different. I agree. I'm going to be honest with you. Go ahead. Jay-Z be talking about some money stuff. I ain't got no clue what he talking but about. But you got $60 million now, so you probably... No, no, no. I, I don't got a clue what ah. he talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, he, yeah, be, he be talking <laughs> about some stuff that I like. Mm -hmm. Eminem. What? He, yeah. be, he, he be a little too dark for me sometimes. Yeah, I was going to say Eminem because he don't do nothing really. Nah, know? he be a little... He be, his rap be a little too dark for me sometimes. So you ain't about to say night or that? Not really. Oh, that's the first. With you. Hey, these young bad. kids, man. Like, he's, like, we let the stature of how tall and big he is. I mean, we older than him. You so young, man. <laughs> oh, Listen, no, I, grew, I grew up loving him, though. Good. As like, you should like, grow up and still continue to. Clean, love cleaning up my closet was one of my favorite Come songs on, ever. Huh? Come on, now. Like, I respect Jay-Z. I don't want anybody to think that this debate between me and Sean is like... If I, had to, if I, if I truly had to pick... I would listen to Eminem over I listen, before I listen to Jay-Z. That is why this guy is this shit more than If I felt like I truly had to pick. Yes. Y'all hear that? But really, you I'm not. You hear that, Ziggy? Re, uh, realistically, I'm not. Lyndon, you my hear that? Life, I'm not listening to either one. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That was, was that? Opinionated. Yeah, no, that's all. You know, respect to all of them. Respect to all of them. And uh, I think Jay-Z is great. Like, I'm not, I'm not going he, to. He is great in his own capacity, but he just might not be my, my yeah, type. Yeah, and that's right. fair. I like this. All right, y'all got anything else? Oh, I like personal questions. You said you play hoops, basketball, so yeah. playoffs. I don't know what the brackets is looking like. I know the brackets got revealed. You got a favorite what? college team or a favorite team that you wishing that win the national title this year? And also NBA, who you got a team that you're rooting for? The Pelicans, yeah, of course. The Texas A&M Aggies. <laughs> so you rolled with them in the tournament? Of course, of course, I'm just saying. You know, There's a bracket, I'm, I'm a bracket card that came out and it passed out. Huh? Okay, okay. Yeah. Huh? But... Bracket just came out, like while we were. The bracket, yeah. All right, well, all right. Right before he showed up. Let me see. I'll right, go ahead. Go and ahead. then, yeah, in the playoffs, I'll be rooting for the Pels. Like, uh, Sixers fan. Pels. Shout out to the Pelicans, like anybody, man. We doing the damn thing. Like anybody the card. He's a hater. He's a hater. Why you like, do you, I... you like the baby cakes? No. Oh, uh, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's a friend, Eric, he's a friend, but he's also like family now, so you know you can't choose family, but so I keep him around. <laughs> I mean, I like I like, he's a hater. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you're on the Pelicans though, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're doing the damn thing yeah, right now. Sure. Shout out to the Pelicans. We just had the game yesterday. Word. Oh, Zion Zion looking man. good too, bro. How I many you ever made it to a few games yet? Yeah, I've been to a few. Um, man. I don't be sitting court side of that. Hey, you don't be sitting court side. Man, Say, no, you were saying Pro That's what I was like. Always like, like the, 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 and I see Cam with all this. Cam is always tweeting about, you know, like basically being cheap. And I'm like, Cam, you done made over 100 million in your career. What you mean? You can't say nothing. You still got I, I, feel, I, I, I don't know that world. So. I'm going to get down there one day because my wife wants to do it. She yeah. Wants, she wants to sit. Bro, I'm sure. Shout out to everybody in Pelican's Twitter. Somebody, I, I know some people, are, somebody can hook this man up. <laughs> get with me and then we'll make it happen. Come on, we got to have Eric McCoy for the playoff game or something. Oh, no facts. If you're in the city for it, yeah. yeah. But yeah. like, I just, I just like going to the games. Like, yeah, I think that's, like, that, that's a fun social outlet. It's like, I, me and the wife will go get there. I know I talk about my wife a lot, but no, shout out to the wife. Me and the wife will go get there and we'll go to the Pelicans game. Like, that's fun. That's a good night. That's a good right. evening. Hell yeah. Um, that sounds like me and my wife. But yeah, I'll be rooting for the Pels. <laughs> Except I use her credit card to buy the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pay her back, but dang. <laughs> I tell her, let the investments come in. That's nasty work, bro. <laughs> let my workers come, come. I got a bad back. <laughs> I used our credit card to go to um, the Minnesota, Minnesota game. I was at the Minnesota oh, game. Oh, work. Yeah, that wasn't fun. James made it fun in the second half. I was like, okay, y'all did them together. Yeah, he, he uh, kind of was semi-viral. I sat in the pool of that damn chat. <laughs> I 
I was like, I hate this team. I love y'all, but I hate this team. Oh, yeah. And I went to Houston, me and my brother. Yo, I'm like, what is going on? Now they got the stigma about me on Saints Twitter that I shouldn't go to any road games because y'all keep losing every time I go. They might be right. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't going to help my air horns. I was trying to, I, I was trying to set him up to like say, oh, nah, he's good, y'all. <laughs> oh, my bad. But I will say, away games, Uh huh. Minnesota was probably... Top that two places to play. Amazing, huh? It's incredible. They're in Seattle. Like, Dude, they had snow fun doing the intro. I was Bro. like, damn. Like, it, was, it was tough. They had the little little metal band. Yeah. Wasn't a single building. I was like, this like, is lit. I mean, I think the Superdome was the best home field advantage because it's just. No, no, no. It's not. Coats in. But it was, it was cool. Like, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Is that your favorite stadium now to play in? Away? Yeah. Uh, Linden, look up and see if A&M is in the uh, tournament before we. Um, yeah, that's a cool little place to, place to play away. Um, Seattle's just loud as hell. I've been to Seattle too. Seattle's loud. I'm going. To, uh, nah, I'm sorry to all the Saints fans, but I am planning two road trips this year. I'm gonna be at the Chiefs game. Hopefully, these guys come with me. When is that? Uh, they haven't. It hasn't come out yet. Come out yet. And okay. um, I'll keep up with that. And um, do you keep up with like the free agency moves and all that too? Like, do you like know what we're doing right now and everything? Or do you just like know like what? I know we signed the linebacker from KC, uh, Willie uh, Gay. Willie Gay. Shout out to Willie Gay. Welcome to the this shit more than the game, but um. I know we re-signed Adam Prentice, our fullback. We signed a fullback, too. We had a, it's been a real quiet. Like, we haven't made any splash, which I'm fine with. I'm like, you know. Didn't we sign a quarterback? A quarterback? We signed <laughs> Nathan. Oh, no, we signed, we, signed, we signed Nathan Peterman. Oh, okay. I'll say, I, I, which has the Saints I'll Twitter, say my, streets my, hot. My mama was asking me, like, did y'all sign a quarterback? And I was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we, uh, we signed uh, Cedric Wilson. Right, and we signed a local oh, kid from um, New Orleans. and went to say no, Stanley Morgan. Yeah, so it's been like okay. no splash moves, but I'm like I'm, I'm like Cedric Wilson though. In that system too. I like the system. He was nice with the Cowboys before he got traded to Miami, yeah. so he was a decent slot uh, wide receiver. I thought he was good. Yeah. Uh, nice seat. Got a nice seat. Nice and that's seat. tournament A and M. Are we going all the way? Huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think who we playing? This is the. Hey, this is the NCAA tournament. Anything. Well, uh, I'm not gonna say I'm like gonna like, pick, like I'm gonna pick A and M. Oh, I think I'll pick y'all to get out of the first. Like, like I just watch college basketball like that. Uh, the, yeah. I love it though. I think it starts Tuesday, huh, Sean? The games. So probably, probably like you know they got a play in. For the I love like basketball starts at nine a.m. Man, that's just yeah. so all day. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Eleven. Eleven. Wednesday. That's when the tournament really starts. Where is the Final Four at this year? Is it London? Come on, London. You the you the stack guy. I was like, because when it was here, I went. That was a good time. Oh, cool, fun. yeah. We're the best event host city in the world. That's what I've heard. That was a good time. We, we know how to do it. Again, like you say about everything being so close. Mm-hmm. Okay, everything's so... We got to ask you this, too, Donald. Go ahead. Do you watch wrestling, Eric? <laughs> or, or have you watched wrestling in the past? So, I went to the WWE that was here. Okay. Um, oh, man. That was, that was awesome. We go. But mm-hmm. when I was growing up, like, I loved it. Played the games, everything. Yeah, same. Um... But I not as not, much. Not watched recently. Oh, I got you. you grew up on a Stone Cold era or John Cena. John Cena Rock, era. Oh, you missed out on the greatest oh, era. Stone Cold and the Rock were. I mean, you from Texas too, so he's like yeah. a god out there. <laughs> he's a god in this house too. Uh, Arizona. Arizona. Is it in Arizona? Okay. Arizona's a good state. I like Arizona. That's a nice little host city too. Uh, host like. state. Um, damn, and this was fun. Y'all got anything else? I don't want to keep the man. No, 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 no. Just appreciate him coming through. Just want, yeah. you know, just want to be respectful of your time as well, man. Um, if y'all got anything really? else, let's, let's do it. Hey, no. Oh, Ziggy, I know you got something, Ziggy. Sounds Linda, you got any questions? Ziggy, Linda, off camera, y'all. Yeah, but, what's up? You got on, the he's, a, he's a huge Saints fan, so come on now. This is pretty big for you. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. <laughs> you don't have nothing. <laughs> well, I'll say this. What are the expectations that you feel like your team is ready to live up to or y'all really expect for the 2024 season? What do y'all? I know it's Super Bowl. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what do y'all really want to get done? Like, what do you think the outcome is going to be? This I year? mean, the first step is always winning your division. Right. Mm, we need to. We like, need to get that and, back. And Tampa's won it. What? The them, last, yeah, them so, Bucks fans. Last two years. Them last Bucks fans. Three. And they've been talking so a little too spicy. That and fan base is obsessed with us, Eric. You don't see it because you ain't on social media. Like, they really want us to be the rival. And we're like, dude. <laughs> We know the Falcons ain't the greatest franchise, but that's our rival. Y'all could go play in the kiddie <laughs> pool with the Carolina. Bruh, they are but annoying. That's the first thing, and I'm like, mm. that's fair. I, like them beating us in the divisional in 2020. Ah, that still burns my and soul, man. Them beating Damn. us in 22 
when Tom Brady came back in that two minute round. I didn't play in that game. I was hurt. That's why. But like, that game pissed me off. That <sighs> y'all got y'all like, lick back in, in um, last December or January. That was this year. Did, but it's not. It's not enough. Yeah. Well, so the first thing is winning the division. They talking smack, but we have, we both had nine wins, and I'm sounding like an annoying Optimus fan, like Ziggy. But I'm like, y'all technically got in on the fact y'all had, y'all had the better uh, division or conference record. Conference but it ain't yeah. like y'all were that much better than us. So it's attainable for y'all to win the division. Absolutely. Unless like you know one of these teams, you know, maybe the Falcons have. A, I, mean, I don't think they will, but I see they're making all these moves. But they making some moves. It's uh, it's attainable if y'all can do it. I believe that y'all have the talent to. Absolutely. I just need to see it. I, I need to see it from. We uh, gotta go do it. We, I need we to like, see it. I need to see honestly, mainly from the coaching staff. So I'm hoping the new officer, people help. I mean, this is me. This is me. Uh, Dennis hasn't been my, you know, after you know, it's like the Sean Payne clouds over. Sean Payne is probably gonna be the greatest coach of our lifetime, and Dennis is like, he frustrates me. But I believe he can do it mm-hmm. to win a division. I just gotta see it, right? I mean, truthfully, I we see it. Like the the time to talk about it is done. Like yeah, we've been, we've been talking about it for the last two years. Like we just gotta go do it. Right. And I feel like that's kind of going to be what I say to the media throughout the year. Like, time for talking about it is done. Last year, we talked about the expectation. We talked about what we could be. We didn't live up to that. Right. So, like, you got, let's, let's you not got talk a, about uh, it. And let's go do it. You got a favorite media member? Because I got a lot of Saints media that follow me. You like them? Um, you ain't yeah. got to say a favorite, but. No, I, I can say a favorite. Uh, I really like Luke Johnson. Luke Johnson. I really like Shout Luke Johnson. Shout out to Luke Johnson. He wrote, he, wrote, he wrote some nice little articles about us. Shout out to Luke Johnson. Yeah. I, pre- I, I appreciate Luke. So. That's good. I like that you have a good relationship with the yeah. media, too. They yeah. got some good people. And uh, I don't want to start naming names because then I'm going to feel like I left somebody out. But uh, I saw your interviews, and I'm like, yeah, it seems like he, you and the media are very cordial and friendly with each other. And they don't interview you enough, in my opinion, because you, you're saying some words of wisdom. But you're a sinner. Like I said, you're anonymous. Like They always want to go to the quarterback. And then, and El- you said, like, that's good, though. You want me to cut it? Right, well, I'm not trying to. Never mind. Never, I don't want you. I know you like your locker room to be, you know, let Elvin have on I do have a, a follow-up question, Eric. Uh, what was it like going into the uh, an NFL locker room for the first time as an NFL player? Like, what did that feel like? Stressful as hell. Huh? <laughs> this is, just truthfully, I mean, you got to think, my first year, I step like, I step in and Drew Brees is my quarterback. Whew. Right. He played with Max Unger, who was – a Pro Bowl and All-Pro player before me. Mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara in the backfield. Mike T, your number one wide receiver. Oh, we're going to miss Mike. I don't know if you know. Cam, Cam Jordan out there, DN. Demario, da- Demario Davis playing linebacker. Should be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and I'm out there like. You came on a win now team. Like, we were Super yes, Bowl a yes, bust yes. when you came on. Like, <laughs> in your rookie year, bro, like, that is by far the hardest year of your career. Like, because you just, like. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you kind of like a lost puppy. Like, when dudes come out and just, like, ball out their rookie year, like Puka Nakua. Whew. Yeah. I'm no, like, wait, wait, wait. Now he's about to be. Oh, damn. My bad. Nah, but, nah, but, nah, but, nah Puka, Puka uh-huh. dog. That's, that's facts, though. Yeah. Like, Puka, Puka, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, you nice for real. Yes, he is. Like, because you kind of like a lot, like, eyes big, heart, first game. Yeah. Heart beating. Oh, man. And wait, wait, it was uh, 2019. Yep, that, that was a classic game, too. Yes, it was. That was the Will Lutz, uh, like 50 yards. Yeah. Good yeah, Lord, I was at that game. I remember I was texting my wife. I'm like, I hate this team. They always screw up in week one. And then Drew, and you were like, oh, God, Drew yes. was so good, man. Y'all did that two minute one. Yes, it wasn't even two minutes, it was like 30 Bro, it seconds. Was like, I was like, it was like 40 seconds. Is that when you were, is that when you like, start, like, whoa, shit, like, this guy, I mean, you know from watching him. Man, bro, but I now you're like, practice. I just got to experience Drew Brees' greatness up close in my first game. from practice. Of course, of course. Of course. From practice, he, from he, practice. He, he need the game. We, we out there in two minutes. We out there in two minutes at practice. <laughs> yeah, he is. Turning up. He was so good. Um, you still talk to him every now and then? I mean, every I now and then, especially yeah. when he's like when, when he's around. You should extend an invite to tell him to come here. That would be great. <laughs> he's the biggest Drew Brees fanboy in the world. He'll good, yeah, bro. I am too. He's bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, we all are. We all are. I might cry. I mean, says the guy that named uh, his dog after. <laughs> <laughs> I named my dog after Eminem and Drew Brees, yeah. What's your dog's name? Shady Brees. Shout out to Shady Brees, by the way. <laughs> you know dogs, you know dogs know, right? Dogs <laughs> know. Saying, you dogs know. Me, I'm tell on you too. <laughs> <laughs> my dog gonna be watching. Let me take a show a picture. Go ahead, Ziggy. Nah, that's all uh, uh pretty much all I have for uh, right now, man. So yeah. Eric, do you have a uh, favorite play that you offensive lineman like to uh do and as a center, how tough? Because we always say how important a team, uh, quarterback is to a team. Mm-hmm. But I've also seen centers that actually have to oh. make the audibles 
like they gotta make audible, so you're actually helping the quarterback. So how important it is to have that good relationship with your quarterback? And do you have a favorite play as far as like a pulling play? Like you get to nail a cornerback, like all right, I'm, I'm about to get you, I'm about to block the hell out your ass to clear the lane for AK. So most uh, number one, how important it is to have that quarterback center relationship? Because like I said, I've seen centers make audibles, mm -hmm. checks at the line, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with an inexperienced quarterback yeah, too. So how difficult is that, and how important is the relationship with the quarterback, and do you have a favorite play? Yeah. Um, difficulty level, I would say, is pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, just because you truly have to learn defenses. Like, that was the hardest thing for me after Drew retired. Because Drew's first two years, like, he did everything. Mm -hmm. Like, everything. I, I got up to the ball, I put my hand on it, and I waited for him. Okay. But then after he left, I had to learn defenses. And what the adjustments could be. Um, we told fans, we told fans, they're going to miss Drew Brees when he go Because they had some fans that so was like, it's time for Drew to go. He's, me and Ziggy were the main ones saying, y'all going to see when he go. Y'all going to see how easy he made the game for everybody. No, it was, it was a thing of beauty. It was a thing of beauty. <laughs> we tried telling him, Ziggy. Um, so, complete props to him. And what was the second part of that question? My bad. Oh, the importance of the quarterback. No, you asked him what's oh, yeah, your favorite play, right? Like, yeah, what what's play your favorite play? Well, you I know that, oh, if they the call line, this play, like, yeah, I'm about to. Yeah. Like you said, uh, your new offensive coordinator, the 49 stable, Kyle Shannon, Sean yep, yep, McVay, yep, 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 just throw him in there, too. Man, Kubiak about but to have y'all. I like how they, I see the offensive lineman always pulling, but I also see a center that hikes and got a pull. Mm -hmm. I know that's a tough job, mm -hmm. especially going against these defensive tackles and the end that's running, that's very Freaks of nature. Athletic. Freaks of nature. That's what I'm saying. So, and I know when you get an opportunity to pull, yeah. I know you're like, your eyes getting big. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm in a moment. I'm blocking well. I'm about to go take this linebacker safety or cornerback out, and I'm about to make a running lane for Alvin Kamara. So, yeah. what what play is good for you and, like I say, the importance of the quarterback and the yeah. center relationship? I would say it's huge because – there's things that a quarterback can see that you can't see. Okay. So you have to have the ability to get up to the line of, the scrim line of scrimmage, make your call, point, whatever you want to call it, and then if you're right, cool. But if you're not, you have to be open to your quarterback coming and be like, nah, like, I see this, mm -hmm. so this is where we're going to re-mic it, or this is going to be the new adjustment, or uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to be open to listening and not think that you're always right. Um, I never thought of that. I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's I'm a Rams that. fan of that. That's crazy. And then, honestly, this might sound this might sound lazy, but it truthfully depends on at what point in the game. Appreciate. It, I'm running through the waters. <laughs> it depends on at what point in the game we are. Okay. If we had played 71, I love a little naked, like a little shh. QB comes out the pocket, dumps it off, nice and easy. We just gotta. You just gotta run, sell the rum for a little bit. Like that's a beautiful thing. If we talk like play twenty, I love me a little screen, like a screen to AK. Or and dump, AK to dump screen. screen. That's what I'm saying. We dump it off. You get you get C's, me, and whatever left guard out. Like and you in open space and you ain't gotta lock a D tackle for. Bro, that reminds me. I'm glad you bring that up. <laughs> the greatest play I ever saw, the Elvin Kamara Green Bay play Ooh. during the COVID year. Yo. You got down the field, man. That's when, that's when Chris Collins were, took notice of who Eric, <laughs> fuck, I'm, I'm sorry for the language, Eric fucking McCoy was. Like, I was like, God damn, a sinner. And you were mean Elvin. And the, first off, Elvin's a goddamn alien. That play was incredible. Bro. You know, Drew was just like, hey, kid, we got to make something happen, Bro. you know. And you, you know, for you to steal the show a little bit by coming down and you were like, I was like, damn, this dude is a beast. <laughs> Nah, that's nah, that's all they came. But bro, like, no, not, not every sinner can do that. Every, but, give yourself some credit. Not every sinner can do that, bro. You, I was like, this dude is running like a running back, getting on the field like that. Before that was even possible, bro broke like three times. He's a he's an alien. Like he's an alien. Like bro, it's it's crazy. He is ooh. It's and wait, like, and him and Clint Kubiak are on the side. That's what gets me excited. And you saying exactly, that you excited? Uh, that gets exactly, me excited. Exactly. He still got some rather than tires that I think he's gonna be. Got jukes, bro. Bro, come on. I'm man. also excited about young boy, uh, Kendra. Kendra, Kendra showed some flashes. I wish he that could stay game? on the field more. Yeah, but same, I think same, he, same, I seen same. the flashes. I hope he can stay on the field next year. That'll be a nice little combo. I like Jamal man. Williams too. I don't I think we utilize him as well. Biggest team guy you could ask ask for. He looks like a cool guy. I would love him because I feel like him, him, me, would like to be. Biggest team guy you could ask for, bro was. 
I've, I've said Never this complain, because he could complain. He's like, yo, I got zero touchdowns. What's up, y'all? Yeah. Bro played essentially fullback for part of the yep. season. Yep. Well, our fullback went down. Yep. That's the stuff that don't be noticing, Ziggy. That was some this shit more than the game energy right there. I like that, bro, y'all. That, that, that gives me, honestly, like, optimism. Like, okay, like, things aren't going. Like, we need to make the playoffs for the third straight year. But, like, y'all still got that unity in the locker room. And y'all Absolutely. still rock with each other. Absolutely. All the things you say today, like, y'all still are a tight-knit unit. That, that gives me, as a fan who's like, man, is this era of the Saints football ever going to get back together? That does give me some optimism that, hey, maybe we could do it. So, that, that excites me. That excites me. I know you keep saying that we can keep, but we got to be respectful of your time. Any last things, y'all? No. That's all I have, man. Coming through, man. For sure, really for sure. Appreciate Historical, you. man. Mind you, again, yeah, you, I man. can't overstate this enough. Like, to have a Saints Pro Bowl player come to our crib, like, as diehard Saints fans as we were, Sean, diehard sports fans, <laughs> as kids, bro, we never would have thought this yeah, was bro. possible. Jeff so Lee, Jerome Payton. If like, we go back, Bobby A. Bear, Dawn Patrol, yeah. we've been... And it, nah, we were little, but like we've been in the it, trenches. Rick so Williams, the, the whole thirteen year old in all of us right now is freaking out. We gotta be professional, so we ain't gonna be like, oh, oh my God. but like the thirteen year old in us is like, this is fucking awesome, man. Again, I don't think it's a normal day in the I'm not gonna say I'm the first one, but an NFL current player to come, a, a great player too, ain't like you again, the bottom of the barrel, to come to a fan's crib and kick it like that's some. Dope shit, man. We really appreciate that. That puts you, Eric, officially, no matter what happens, there's going to be some great players in the future, and there's damn, been, damn sure been some great players in the past who have been worthy of this shit more than the game, Mount Rushmore. But you are, I'm here to announce it right now on the John O'Bone Show. You are the first player ever, forever, you will be on the this shit more than the game, Mount Rushmore, mm. for doing this for us today. We appreciate mm. that. Round of applause. And... This is the beauty, guys, of any future guests, Saints player, Pelicans player, or celebrity, artist, whatever, that wants to come on the John Bone Show. Not only do you get to kick it with me and my crew, but my mama loves giving care packages to people who are worthy of it. And my mama made this for you. Right? <laughs> so, this is from my mama, Gina Barnes. I'm, I'm excited. Mama Barnes. Yeah. First off, what we're going to do, you didn't get a uh, press conference when you got drafted, huh? Like, you know, every player oh, gets the jersey. I was, I was looking for it. I was like, damn, didn't they give you a press conference? I don't think so. That's crazy, man. Well, you know what? We're about to give you, though, because you are this mm. shit more than the game certified. Yeah, give him a round of applause, y'all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This shit more than the game certified. You got to either wear it, like, before training camp. All right. Or All maybe, right. you know, they set the tone for the season. Or maybe it would be great if you were, like, right before the Falcons game or something. Like, really let these dudes know what time it was. It's but, more than the game. Hey. It's more than the game. And, <laughs> and from my mama. Yeah, let me see. My mama. I'm excited about my mom. I'm excited to be on my mom's there. She, I don't know your house needs this, but she loves to make, this is personalized, she made these. These are drink oh, coasters. Hell yeah. And so she made this all for you. So oh, never, shoot. Hey, this is tough. You can never have enough drink coasters because my mama has made me like 100 <laughs> and my wife still puts her drinks. I ain't gonna do that on my kid. That's my wife like that. But hey, like, you see, tough. my mama made some cool coasters. She even made. Oh, yeah, let me pull them out. Yeah, say, yeah. That's tough. Yeah, well, you know. I'll, say, I'll, show, I'll show them to the cam. Any future guests that wants yeah, to come on? Mama Barnes got y'all hooked up. Nice. Mama Barnes gonna hit y'all with the. With the no, you having some beers during your off-season period? Yeah. Oh, that's that look right there. Yeah, that's what he had on his mind. Yeah, got even got your old lady. Got yeah. 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 My mama be doing her research. Let's shout to Bianca. So shout out to Mama Boss. Thank you, Mama Boss. You deserve that. Thank you, Mama Boss. Bro, we uh That's tough. Damn, man, we can't thank you enough, Eric. This is awesome. Sure. This is awesome. Sure. When, when you leave, we all gonna be like, oh, we, 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 we did that. <laughs> we did that. But I know that everybody watching is gonna love this, man. We appreciate you. Again, y'all, a Saints Pro Bowl player. Then pulled up to the crib. How crazy is that? I'm gonna take that back. I'm getting a little sentimental. How crazy is that? I don't know, you see. Above you, that's our, our guardian angel, my big brother Dwayne. He uh, passed away. He would have been here if he was still here, but he passed away uh, two years ago. And I know he's probably looking down and smiling. So, mm -hmm. right. you doing this for us, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Shout out to him. Shout out to the whole family. Big uh, Taysom. Shout out to my, my, yeah, so if Taysom wants to come on the show, tell him he'll be doing my guardian angel. A big favor. Uh, shout out to my production crew. And of course, shout out to Eric McCoy. Eric, let him know. Why did you stop on the John O'Bone show? It's more than a game. This shit more than a game. <laughs>
But did you know that this merch wasn't made only for sportswear? No sorry. This shit more than a game is a lifestyle brand. You can wear the shirts for anything, such as going shopping, working out, ah, this shit more than a game, doing chores, setting the mood. Oh yeah, that's that thing I like. Changing attire. Grabbing a bank. Go, 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 go. Jump in a Falcons fan. And so much more. So purchase your official This Shit More Than a Game merch today for the low starting point of $28.03. And let the world know this shit more than a game. Warning, please see a doctor if you feel you've gone too far with taking this shit more than a game. This shit more than a game is not associated or licensed with any organization or entity except for John and Bones LLC. This shit more than a game is not responsible for any fights caused by the shirts. John and Bones LLC does not promote or recommend violence of any kind, unless it's at the expense of a Falcons fan. If you enjoyed that video, then make sure you hit the like and subscribe button right now for more of the John Bones show. The fastest rising show on YouTube. Just trust me on that. You don't have to check the data. And oh yeah, this shit more than a game.